here we are. Hello, everyone out there in the wonderful world of Twitch land. This is John Hello. here with Rook and Rasp. So uh, hopefully everybody out there can hear us and everything is good on the audio end. I think it is. But anyway, welcome so <laughs> much to our Tuesday night stream right now which is our stream of hecking good doggos from what ink games we are very honored to have matt uh matthew Orr from what ink games himself here to uh see us through this adventure so thank you so much for coming on matt i had no problem it's uh it's always great to play games and uh <laughs> all you we had fun last week so here we are for more Awesome. And I, you know, I'm, I'm going to mention briefly, uh, this is actually a cool oh, yeah. thing because uh, we're actually on the anniversary of one year ago. I actually ran, I think it was actually for Brandon and Charles with 1-8 Games yeah. that I ran, never get, going home. But roughly about this time, four years ago or somewhere in that ballpark, uh, we had Matthew on for our uh, Never Going Home podcast back when before we started up the you know the actual play Twitch channel. Nice, that's yeah. awesome. I so, I remember that game well. I think you, you you were one of the first to get to show off uh, what the game was like. Uh, so it was uh, yeah, it, it, it's pretty weird synergy to be back again on the same date. Uh, it is, uh, and uh, it's actually it. <laughs> Uh, I think it says something about the game because Never Going Home was our number one episode on the podcast. With over, you know, oh, wow. I, it was in the ballpark of two thousand downloads just on that episode. So, oh, wow, wow, that's that's yeah. Well, we kept since you guys were one of the first ones, we kept sending people there when they asked us like, "Is there an actual play?" And it's like, well, we did this audio one, so go check it out there. <laughs> Well, awesome. Well, going around the group really quick, uh, introducing yeah. everyone and letting uh, our other players uh, introduce yourselves as well as your uh, anything where people can find you. So starting up with Sierra or Cece. Hi, uh, I'm Cece. Um, I have just forgotten every single thing I know about myself. <laughs> um, you can you can find me on the internet uh twitter instagram all the fun things uh at c silencio um and you can also find me on the drunken geek pod podcast um we play uh pathfinder second edition it's an actual play game uh pretty fun find me there too awesome thank you for coming on <laughs> and michael Hey everybody, Michael. Uh, I use he, him pronouns. You can find me at LoserMLW on the socials, and you can also find me at the Redemption Podcast, a Star Wars actual play. Uh, we are coming into our eighth season in the fall, and you can find me at the Identico channel at Play Identico um, on Twitch as well, where we do a Monday night show of their cyberpunk game, Identico. Nice. Imagine that. Okay. And also, <laughs> we have Corey. Hello, I'm Corey. I use she or they pronouns. You can usually find me at Little Loudmouse on a few places. I don't think that's my Instagram, but I also don't use Instagram very often, so no worries there. Uh, you can also find me on Midnight Alley podcast. That is on Instagram, and eventually we'll have our URL set up to link from Midnight Alley searchable. <laughs> It'll happen. We're Goals. gonna get you to a hundred. Everybody, Goals. if you're if you're out there listening and you have a YouTube, go out there and follow them. It made me feel good. <laughs> but uh, that said, we're here to play some heckin' good doggos. You will notice tonight that we do have some new uh, listener rewards or viewer rewards uh, in the little Cluthulu token in the bottom on the, you know, I think it's on the bottom right for y'all's screen. You'll see the little magnifying glass and you click on that and you'll be able to select. Uh, we have three new viewer rewards this week that y'all can use. Uh, I think many of us will be happy to see you use those as well. But that said, let's go ahead and pass it off to our showrunner for the night. So, Matthew, it's all you. All right. Do, do we need to do the icebreaker uh, that we did? Because we saved one up from last week. If we, we want to start with that? Or have we already, like, fully transitioned into the into the play? Is this still beginning matter? <laughs> I, you know, it's one of those things where I can't even, do, what was our icebreaker we were talking about doing for? 
So I wrote it down. That's why I remember. I wouldn't oh, remember oh. it otherwise. Oh, man. Uh, Somebody smart. Was, if, you went through the, uh, if you went through the effort of writing it down, I think we should use it. So it was seagull-related stories was the, 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 oh, the yeah. thing. And I believe some of you had some that they were longing to share. So that is... <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't have a seagull story? I mean, if you don't, if you don't live near a coast, I guess that makes sense. But, uh, I have a seagull story. Um, when I was younger, I lived with my grandmother in Florida. My grandmother's a little bit crazy. Um, <laughs> and she likes to feed wildlife. So every time that we would go to the beach or to bush gardens or to anywhere, really, that we were outside and there might have been seagulls, she always made me bring a hat with me. And she would put, like cheese puffs or french fries on top of my little sun hat so that the birds would come and hang out and eat the snacks off of my hat oh, wow. um it was terrifying the first few times and then i i learned how to kind of uh not panic i don't know how i figured <laughs> that out but it happened um and she finally stopped when i turned 18 and stopped going to florida oh. <laughs> boy that's so much better than mine <laughs> <laughs> What's yours, John? Well, uh, I'm originally from Texas, and I have family in an area, a uh, coastal city down there known as uh, Corpus Christi. It's one of the furthest southern towns in, uh, in Texas on the coast. And uh, I would go visit my grandparents there all the time. Mm -hmm. And my grandfather taught me to fish using shrimp. Like, you would actually hook the shrimp and go fishing with that. You were trying to shoot for pretty large things but the thing is uh you were in a race to bait your hook and get it out there and into the water quicker than the uh the gulls will fly by and grab it off your line so that you know i i remember just the anxiety as a kid of i gotta get it on there and they're coming down they're going for my bucket you know, I can't imagine the horror if one of them actually snagged it out of the air. I mean, that thing's got a hook in it, right? I they mean, don't care, yeah. and they—they—it's not. They <laughs> oh. actually don't get hooked. They are—they're like freaking little, you know, like house flies. They can avoid, you know, what they don't want, and they just grab it off there and go. I mean, it is crazy. Like, seagulls are wow. insane. I think my only seagull story is more seagull adjacent. Uh, I used to do a public access show and one of our daily warmups when we would be in the studio recording, my crew tortured me with the uh, Star Wars Seagulls Stop It Now bad lip sync oh, boy. song. <laughs> so <laughs> I hear that song now and I'm just like, memories. I, I am in the studio again <laughs> with that song. <laughs> <laughs> we all know that one yeah 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 my seagull story is less traumatic than cc's i think listen um, i'm fine now i grew up I'm okay fine now good yeah <laughs> fine now. we were uh my wife and i took a tour uh for an anniversary trip we went around uh lake erie so for us, we went through, went to Cleveland, we hit a couple other spots, and we ended the tour, the trip kind of in the Niagara Falls area. Anybody who's ever been to Niagara Falls, um, you may have stopped at the little shop on the Canadian side. Um, that's right next to the falls. It's a little gift shop, and there's a, and there's a restaurant in there, you know, kind of a little burger joint. Well, what no one really warns you about is that if you come out of that restaurant with a tray and that tray has fries on it, there is literally a what I would call a gang of <laughs> seagulls. And that gang is specifically trained to target and assault anyone with fries. Um, again, unbeknownst to me. I walked out to find a table for you know, my, my wife who was still inside and I had uh, some food on the tray and some fries and I went to go sit down and within seconds of like exiting the door and crossing this open space, I was assaulted pro by probably like six to eight 
different seagulls that were all zooming at me, successfully knocking the tray out of my hands. The fries went flying, and of course the seagulls went absolutely crazy. And I was, you know, covering my head for dear life, not really getting exactly at the moment what the problem was. Um, the crowd got a good laugh. Um, I spent the rest of my time at the falls, kind of like nervously looking up every time I walked out of a building. I wouldn't say I certainly don't have gull PTSD, but you know we do have gulls in our local Target parking lot, and I do give them the stink eye every now and then. Yeah. So, uh, Matt, do you have a gull story? Because uh, at this point, we're we're moving towards the we need to do a case study on the you know the parallels of role playing and seagulls. Uh, I mean, you know, we can. We have a list uh, that we've been keeping at the Wedding Games HQ of like the heck and good what comes next. So like, <laughs> you know, we could have some heck and good seagulls. Uh, oh, heck and bad seagulls. It, yeah, heck and bad heists. seagulls or uh, like oh heck seagulls. Um, uh, yeah, it, it could it could happen. It could happen. Uh, as far as like a seagull related story, I think I also have to go with an adjacent one, and it's it's sort of like a. a more of a, a pleasant memory. I, I lived for a brief amount of time in the central coast of California. And so we could literally see the ocean out the window. And like basically all day long, there would be these lines of pelicans, like 15 to 20 pelicans at a time, just kind of like coasting by on the ocean breeze. And then like 10 minutes later, they'd go back up the coast. And the way that they're the pelican, the brown pelican, it, it's just, I guess it's the brown pelican. They were brown. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> but it, it's got its, like, body tucked up, and its its head is in such a way. And we called them the, the diamond. We called them pterosaurs. So they just looked like pterosaurs flying by. And so it's like, oh, here, come the, here comes the wing of pterosaurs. And then there they go back again. And so, <laughs> you know, all the flying, yeah. flying, um, I mean, yeah, that's, totally. that's barely even good. Uh, girl related uh it's barely even a story just a nice memory that i have of watching the the pterosaurs fly by it's still nice do you ever get the <laughs> the jurassic park theme song stuck in your head as you're watching them or thinking about them? uh yeah i don't believe i've connected that exactly before but i'm picking <laughs> up what you're putting down so like yeah what now i will uh <laughs> every time i go out to galveston and watch the pelicans like at some point invariably i will get the main chords of the Jurassic Park theme song just bouncing around as an earworm. <laughs> we, we were at the zoo yesterday or the day before. I can't maybe I can't remember what day we were at the zoo. Maybe maybe it was Sunday. We were at the zoo. But there was um the there were geese and there were like baby geese and the baby geese look a lot weirder than the regular geese like cuz babies kind of have like their feet were like already the full grown adult size but then their <laughs> bodies were like real small and of course they have like their little you can they don't have their full feathers they just have the little weird arms and which are tucked up beside them and they were like a whole troop of them walking past and my my wife was like Although just like velociraptors, and it's like yes, yes, they are just like velociraptors, like just waddling by with their little weird arms, and Whoa. yeah. So yeah, I mean, if, I if wouldn't they're... say that directly to the face of a velociraptor. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that directly to the face of a goose. Those things are aggressive. <laughs> oh, right. I, well, that's the thing. Like the velociraptor really is only as bad as big as a chicken, despite what they showed in that movie, and. The goose is mean, so like they're actually real close together, like in temperament and whatever. But anyway, um, and I think I've having seen... good dinos is another one on the list, so I, I, it still counts as promotion here. But uh, <laughs> before this becomes uh, bird bird talk, uh, I think we maybe should uh, play some heckin' good doggos. You've got, yeah, it's uh, and bird I will talk tell... with Rook and Rasp. Yeah, I mean it's in the name. It's in the name. Uh, the I will tell everyone before we get started uh, that's watching that uh, we have now reached the stage where the Kickstarter for Hacking Good Doggos has been converted into a pre-order link. So if you're watching this and uh, you want to get the game uh, and you didn't get in on the original Kickstarter, it is now in pre-order. So have at it. Awesome. Uh, all over on you know Kickstarter.com, 
look for Heckin' Good Doggos, or there will probably be a link. I'm sure John's taking care of that, right? I can get it. Uh, excellent. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to remind us, it, it, we're not going to necessarily uh, pick up Blake uh, exactly from like events that happened before, but I do want to kind of talk about uh, the events that happened last week a little bit. Uh, you all had a small adventure, a modest size adventure, uh, chasing down some uh, some shiny things that were on a little box that uh, <clears throat> that um, London's human needs to make the big red box go vroom vroom on the road, and uh, it was stolen by a, first a squirrel, and the squirrel traded it to the bushy tails, which seemed to be some. Uh, uh, some like low-level monarchy operation going on at the back of the recycling center, run by the, uh, the run by the raccoons, and you went and talked the bushy to them. Tails. The bushy tails, exactly. And the bushy tails told you, or que the queen of the bushy tails, Queen Charmer, told you that uh, she'd already traded those particular shinies uh, to the to the local crow, the local murder, and so then you had to go to the abandoned uh, parking lot and. Uh, trade meat or sweets for uh, the the shinies, which you uh, accomplished by leading the crows to. Uh, it was, it's Becky, right? Becky's. Uh, that's your um, your mm -hmm. your best friend, right? Daily, uh, and she made shortbread. She came out with some shortbread for everyone. So, <laughs> uh, and then at the end, London got to go on the car ride. Right. So. Those are our events that we've had so far, if anyone cares about what happened last week. And um, starting off this week, we're going to start with uh, it's time to be at the dog park. And I believe that was uh, the picturesque dog park was something that you introduced to the game, uh, CC, yes. with uh, Artemis and uh, Artemis and Buffy. So why don't you give us a little bit of description about what the little more detail about the dog park and then we'll everybody can kind of uh, explain how you and your best friend ended up in the dog park or maybe without your best friend. I don't know, but how, how you as as your dog was ended up in the in the in the dog park today. Uh, but start with the give us some more details about what's at the dog park, um, Artemis. Yeah, so the dog park is real big. Um, it's got all kinds of like training equipment, but all of it is like stark white and they come and power wash it every weekend mm -hmm. um, so that it can maintain its color. Um, Cause it's, it's there for, for pictures. Um, there's lots of, the, they've got those fancy fountains that like have a button that like sets off a little water fountain at the bottom for the dogs to drink out of. Um, and then there's also a taller one for the humans to drink out of. So it's super cool. Um, and yeah, lots of like really pretty flowering trees all over the place. Um, and just tons of places that have like little markers that are like, you can take a really good photo here at 3.45 PM. Oh. Like, <laughs> For, for all the, the fun influencers who come along to take pictures of their pets in the park. Oh. Say that five times fast. <laughs> I quite do that. Nope. Um, and oh. Artemis's favorite thing to do is they've got the, the like ramp, the double-sided ramp, and she likes to run up and down the ramp, just back and forth. Oh. She's got a lot of energy. Nice. I love it. Uh, and I, I assume, because you set this up, that like Artemis is is a is a participant in Buffy's social media presence. Like Oh Buffy's, absolutely. She like, has her she's part of Buffy's, but she also has her own Instagram oh, okay. account. Um oh. and so she's <laughs> she's one of those Insta doggos. Um and she yeah, she just loves to show off for the camera when she has the attention span to work at it. <laughs> Just out of curiosity, what would Artemis's Insta be? Um, Ooh. Artemischief. Nice. 
Nice, you uh, pulled that out right well, quick. It's perfect, you. too. <laughs> uh, all right, excellent. So is this a typical day, you think, for, uh, for Artemis and Buffy at the dog park? Or, um, you know, how, how did you end up anything different about today? Or is it just kind of normal, your activities uh, here at the dog park today? Um, I think this is a normal thing. Um, but today, can it be Artemis's birthday? Sure. We're having a, a doggy birthday party at the Excellent. park. Excellent. And all of you were invited. It's Artemis's Excellent. like first birthday. She's still <laughs> a baby. Oh. oh. Hey, this this is love perfect. It. Yes, love it. Okay, so uh, let's uh, let's uh, let's yes and that. And so uh, you, uh, all, the rest of you that are in the pack. Uh, you are invited to Artemis's first birthday. Hey, it's amazing. Oh. And uh, so why don't you give us each a little description of like, if you want, like how you got to the park or like how you, uh, what, what you normally do at the park or what you're doing today at the dog party. Um, you know, what, what is, what's the, what, what are the rest of you doing at the, at the party or at the park because you're at the party or whatever, you know? I think uh, for you know my character, he definitely is going to be uh, kind of playing King of Mountain on one of the park benches, uh, you know, imagining himself as one of the big dogs, this little you know Shih Tzu. And anytime <laughs> one of the other dogs tries to get up there on top of the bench with him, he just barks and chases him off of it or whatever. Oh. Hmm. Daly's playing chill. She's it, Becky dressed her up just a little bit, sparkly t-shirt kind of thing. But uh, right. otherwise, she's just kind of chill. She's laying down in a clean patch of grass. It's a green shirt, so there's no good, not going to be grass stains, kind of thing. So uh, just enjoying the antics of a particularly tiny dog playing king of the mountain. <laughs> Relax and have fun. She and Becky walked to the uh, duck park. That's how they normally get around anywhere. Excellent, excellent. I think this is uh, London and his owner's first time at the dog park. I think this is also their first birthday party for a, a neighborhood dog. <laughs> um, so they show up a little bit late and London comes running into the park with what looks like a let's see what kind of what's a good thing a stuffed unicorn with uh, a, a unicorn like Pegasus chew toy um, and he will run up and just kind of deposit it near Artemis and he stands there and you know just for you for me from us from you <laughs> thank you thank you thank you uh and she's immediately gonna like pick it up and tear off to go and show her mom how cool her new toy is <laughs> and and london will like will follow awesome and you know you can hear his owner uh tommy his best friend tommy uh not too far away hey, hey don't go far don't hey don't go far <laughs> uh, you guys are you guys are killing it it's great uh you don't even know how good this setup is um okay i love it so I thank you like uh request that there are pup cakes and puppuccinos at this party for all the dogs puppuccinos puppuccinos uh Becky, Becky, oh, oh, that was in one the... of our rewards this evening See, that's right the segment. puppuccinos i was like where have i seen that before it was the <laughs> it's the channel rewards yeah the puppuccinos i uh not before just recently i've i've <laughs> <laughs> pup cakes and uh puppuccinos love it um okay uh let's see what is the next thing to do okay so we're gonna do um all right, so you guys are there, you're playing around, 
and you've got uh, there's a lot of other dogs at the dog park like probably if Artemis has an Instagram a bit of an influencer like you know the there's probably more than just like the like the four of you are are are, are like the pack that you all are each other's kind of closest dog doggo friends but there's probably like some other people that have come not necessarily like from other cities but like you know there's a lot of dogs here it's a big party and like um you know it's almost like word gets around that like uh there's going to be a dog party and then then just there's a dog there's a lot of dogs um and there's definitely some dogs that like you don't necessarily know as well and um they're not necessarily like uh you know they're not like from like i, I don't want to do like they're not they're just from like another they're just from a couple streets over you just don't hang out with them as much they're not like snooty uptown dogs or whatever they're just they're just not your like local most local immediate dogs right um but there's kind of some play going on and like uh it's kind of like uh you know almost like um part of the the dog park is sort of like uh they're, they're kind of like scoping out territory like you guys are all kind of hanging out together and that they're kind of hanging out over there you're kind of like do we want to go talk to them do we want to go like like you could go to go run a run around but like you know you're kind of like eyeing each other or whatever of like um uh, of like uh you know is this going to be a is this going to be an issue are we going to be friends like you know like would you meet new dogs like it's it's kind of like um you're unsure like how it's going to go down so you get not necessarily again like uh not necessarily like bad vibes but you just don't know you don't know how mm -hmm. this first this this first interaction is going to go but there's definitely like a group of dogs that are kind of like you can kind of sense that they're all they're all together the way you guys are all together. Yeah, I mean, there's there's um, going to be multiple little packs in the neighborhood, right? I mean, sure. Yeah. yeah. When you're a jet, you're a jet all the way. <laughs> Hopefully not that extreme. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of like where I'm going with this. Like, you guys can kind of like decide if you want to like, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, this is your situation. Like, um, you can make an issue of this other little pack, or, you know, you could not. Like, it's up to you guys what you want to do. Um, if you want to try and scope out some information about them, or or just uh, roll right into, like, a, a conflict to kind of assert your, like, this is, we're, this is our party, we're here, and you, you're our guests. Like, you know, however you, you what do you... You know, you just, it, you're in the real early stages of like, uh, you know. Beginning so tonight. Are the other dogs necessarily... infringing on like the party? Uh, or like, are they, are, are the other dogs like cry, trying to like, are, are they like party crashers? Uh, maybe a little, maybe a little, but like it's an open park. So it's like, they're kind of like maybe hanging around the the invite the, the invited dogs are kind of like together and then like also in the dog park because it's pretty big there are these other dogs but they're kind of like almost forming up like they're they're gonna they're gonna come invest they're forming up to maybe investigate the situation um I feel like and, and you guys notice this kind of right as it's it's starting to happen so you can like i said you can take an approach that whatever approach you want uh to this uh how big is the biggest dog amongst them? Oh, right, because you're big. Uh, <laughs> I would say that you figure... I, I, I'm almost, like, imagining this as, like, not, like, the total, like, mirror image, but there's, like, it's a pretty equivalent group okay. of other dogs. Uh, so, like, probably about as big as you. Like, you, you're not sure, like, if you actually, like got up next to each other or like you know you yeah. can't really tell from here which one's biggest but like More or nobody less that match, <laughs> yeah All it right. feels like feels like uh you know you're you're they've they've got a big dog too just like this group has as you as you're as you're if you're taking a gander your little your little hmm. head turn i don't know i you know what i stand up and go just kind of gently circle to back up Artemis and London and wherever uh, uh, John's character <laughs> brain fart. Bandit. Bandit. 
Bandit, Bandit. thank you. To where Artemis London and Bandit are just like, I'm you were not. Close. It, yeah. Brain fart was close. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they call me, I'm... you know, when I'm being bad. <laughs> Dang it, brain fart! Uh, I'm not actively making myself, like, threatening. I'm just like, hey, don't think that just because you've got a big dog, they don't, we don't have a big dog, too, mm. kind of thing. So... This might stretch in that case, too. <laughs> what if, because this is supposed to be, like, a whole social media thing... And mom invited extra dogs to come and hang out because they're also Instagram dogs. Um, what if, is there like anyone in particular that Buffy might be talking to whose dog might be in that mm. other pack that they might be, oh, let's see if they get along and try to like get them <laughs> to play together and then we can see how it goes. Uh, is that like, like, a, like another insta they just, dog they w- with a, yeah with a they want to get like photo ops sure of these dogs uh, playing together and they sh- don't know if they actually will or not <laughs> exactly i uh, know this is great i like this uh i like this direction okay so yeah sure so uh uh you see your mom talking to some uh like a, a guy over there and he's got like um this just uh a gorgeous Weimaraner, is that how you say that one? Like just this sleek coat, so glossy. Uh, they're they got. I'm I'm very bad at dogs, uh, dog breeds, but like it's a very, uh, very not fancy looking dog, but very glossy uh, coat, very healthy looking, very attractive looking dog, very photogenic. That's the word I'm looking for. Very photogenic, gray, uh, gray dog on a on a like a yellow leash that's attached to this this guy and yeah you're you're um yeah buffy's definitely talking to him and kind of like uh they're 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 in conversation sure okay um so artemis is gonna go ahead and make her way be like let's let's go see my mom guys and kind of head over that direction see if anyone follows her but she's going over to her mom either way like let's 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 see what's going on. She might know. My mom knows everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all y'all should get y'all should uh y'all should go. Yeah. I'm up on the bench still. <laughs> okay. That's that's fine. You 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 guard our territory. <laughs> yes. And and London's London keeps looking between Artemis and the, the table of like treats. Uh but but the but the treat but the treats, those uh the, the treats. The they are over here. The, the, the treats, are they safe? Yes. They're on the table. No one's oh, allowed oh, okay. on the table. Okay. Well, do, are they, do, these dogs don't look like they... They they listen. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll make Fair. them listen. Don't worry. I, I think Bandit's got us. Bandit, Bandit guard the treats. Oh, I've got this under control, guys. And I actually... Oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, the moment that y'all begin to walk away, I do that little, you know, hunch down on the bench, kind of build up my energy. And I'm going to run off the bench and spring off. And my goal is to land, hopefully, in a puddle. Uh, preferably mud. <laughs> <laughs> it's just another right. example of park this morning. <laughs> park Horky? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> um, so, uh, okay. In the in the uh, brief amount of time that it takes you to walk over to this thing, I, so we have this uh, unusual skill roll that we're gonna do here. Uh, uh, Bandit, why don't you give us a um. I have my performing skill names pulled or... up. It's the uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Perfor- this, you're performing a feat of some sort here. Uh, I think this All is right. going to be. Uh, uh, I'll go ahead and do. Uh, I have one in performing. I'll go ahead and use uh, four. I have four dice with brawn, so I'll use two of them uh, along with that. So I have. A, I'm rolling three dice, and then I'll save two for re rolls, or adding. Awesome. <clears throat> Solid strategy. 
All right, I'm all I got a five, a four, and a two. I'm gonna use one of those uh, pips to reroll. There we go. I got a five and a four on the reroll for the other two. So I'm gonna take my last point and knock that last uh, four up to a five. So that's five, five, five. Five, five, five. That's a lot of success. You're really agile. Uh, what exactly are you trying to do? <laughs> I am... Give us a little more elaborate uh, description so, of what you're trying to do here. My goal is to launch off into a puddle, hopefully a puddle near these uh -huh. dogs that are also oh, okay. all about the photo opportunities. And if I don't <laughs> land in the puddle and get some on them, my shaking sure as heck will. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Their, par their parents are going to see that and want to clean them up and take them home as soon as possible. At least that's what he thinks. All right. Uh, so um, I think that uh, with, with three successes on that roll, you can definitely like, I wasn't imagining like puddles exactly, but um, you could definitely like get a little bit of... Uh, yeah, you can get a little bit of that going on. Like you could definitely like, uh, you you managed to find, like you spotted it when you were being when you were playing King of the Mountain. You found like the, like I said, it's not exactly like a rainy day, but you there's like this kind of like, on the behind the bench, there's kind of like a little bit of a dip in as it goes uphill and so there's just enough of a little slough in the land there that there it's like the only puddle in the park and like you just <laughs> you just went right for it and landed right in it so yeah you've got like um uh you know a big splash and there's a mix of like shouts and also like laughter and there's dog barkings uh, dogs barking and yeah you you've got uh a real mess that you've you can create <laughs> here um if if that's what you're trying to do oh yeah no i i am going to be a muddy mess chasing these dogs trying to shake off on them <laughs> <laughs> all right um so i think we'll give so this, so the puddle, the puddle has happened. So like, this is going to, I think what's going to happen is this is going to happen uh, pretty quickly. So you're going to have some time to make a first impression, Artemis, before Bandit makes this uh, strong impression, which won't be the first impression. Um, so <laughs> what do you, uh, what's your approach to this? Um, I, I guess I've got to start thinking of dog names here. What's your approach uh, when you, when you get up to these other the other dogs that uh, you're the 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 Wyman runner what are you gonna what's your opening sort of like whatever tell us what you do so um has she ever seen this Wyman runner around here before let's, like, call, uh, let's call the Wyman runner Andre I, I love it that sounds <laughs> okay. great uh has she ever seen Andre around here <laughs> um like maybe not like like, like, uh, probably, yes. Probably you've seen these dogs. Because I imagine this is all still part of the greater neighborhood. Like I said, there's not, like, people coming in from very far away. But this is sort of like, if you've seen Andre before, probably not had too many, too much opportunity to interact with, um, with him. Okay. Um, so she's going to walk up next to her mom and she's gonna look at this um look at andre with her tail wagging and she's gonna go hi i i i, I don't i don't think we've met before i'm artemis hi and she's just all wiggles right now excellent uh great uh and and andre is kind of like he's almost like um uh, he's he's sort of like uh, not like he's just reserved. He's he's like you're you can't really get a good read uh, right off the bat on like why, uh, but definitely not like you know um, kind of gives you like sort of like not a growl but just sort of like a aloof you know 
Yeah, yeah, but not necessarily like uh, he thinks he's better than you. Not exactly that. Just sort of like this isn't his scene, you know? He's sort of like, oh, hi, uh, yeah, hello. You know, and well, just like, kind of... Like, oh, a dog park, how gauche. <laughs> no, again, I don't want him to be too fancy. Just like, uh, <laughs> just sort of like, <laughs> like, oh, yeah, hey, hey you know, like, uh, you know, like, like almost too cool for this scene, you know? Uh, but not in, but not like, you know, I don't know, too cool, not, not too fancy, if that makes sense, you know, uh, um, yeah, you, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's, I think I've seen you around before, like, what, uh, uh, happy birthday, I guess, and <laughs> kind of like, Thanks. are you here for my party? Uh, I think... He goes, uh, yeah, like Ariana Grande. Sorry, that was the first thing that went through my head when I asked that question. I had to say it. I have no no ability to stop myself. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I have no response to that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so he's like, uh, yeah, I guess is that is that what's going on here? Uh, and. Um, uh, and he's kind of like he's kind of like looking past you, maybe at the um, at the, uh, the the table of treats and stuff like that. Um, like he, he, maybe he's interested. Maybe he's interested in that. And uh, it, so I think you get one more like thing you can say to him before Bandit comes in here, like a a wrecking ball here. Okay. Uh, um. So. Yeah. So I think she's kind of like oh, notice him looking at the treats, mm -hmm. and she's gonna be like, "Yeah, mom says we get treats later." And then she looks at her mom with her like mouth wide open, tongue hanging out, huge grin, just so excited. Excellent. All right, and then I think uh, you bust in with your scene here uh, <laughs> um, that you've set up, <laughs> uh, and it, and you're just shaken furiously as uh, you shake off the, the only mud in the whole park onto everyone in this, this scene. And I think, uh, uh, I, 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 I don't know, I think you probably, it's probably unavoidable that you're also going to get some on, uh, on Artemis here. Uh, unless That's you're... She has spots. Uh, <laughs> it's just more there spots. You there you go. I All right. So, what are you, again, what are you trying to, like, tell us exactly what you're trying to accomplish with the, again, well, you're, you're just shaking off mud and seeing what happens? That and, uh, I mean, there were other dogs coming in on the territory and, uh, you know, another pack and I'm not the biggest, I'm not the, you know, I'm not the strongest, but mm -hmm. if there's one yeah. thing I can do that other dogs can't usually, it's getting dirty. And so I will, I'm going to get these guys dirty. I am going to, uh, if an owner tries to stop me, I'm going to run past the owner. I'm going to collapse on their foot, on their feet and be, and get them dirty too. <laughs> okay. So I think what we're going to, what I, I think what we want to do here is, uh, is a conflict for the game. Uh, but what I, what I think uh, what I've decided, because you were talking about um, wanting to see some more complicated mechanics from the the card play, so I this is a this is a uh, what I've decided here to do. This is sort of off script, not really from the from the book, but uh, so you're all going to play one card. But I, I don't, I'm not even looking at the cards right now. But like, you aren't allowed to tell each other what you're going to try and do before you all have to pick your cards. So you're each gonna you're each gonna show a card. You're each gonna pick a card for like again the, the four suits. You've got like some sort of physical presence or prowess uh, with a club. You've got a uh, attempt to be friendly with a spade. You've got uh, a aggression, an attack of some kind with a diamond or a just straight up puppy dog eyes. I'm adorable and you're gonna do what I say kind of approach with a uh, heart. So. You each need to have your four cards in your hands, and then you're gonna each reveal a card and tell us 
the 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 way that you're approaching this conflict. Like, Bandit has rushed in here and has made this scene, and all of you dogs are going to respond in a way that that mm-hmm. will try and sort of negotiate the future of this this interaction. Um, but you obviously haven't planned and coordinated things, so uh, if we'll just I, I don't even know who's the somebody just. Uh, does that make sense what we're what we're doing here? Yeah, mm-hmm. I've got right. mine. Uh, I, I picked out what I'm doing and I'm putting it up near the top. All right. I'll take south, I guess. West. East. <laughs> I'm still I'm Great. still picking. Yeah. Still picking. When you when you've all when you've all decided what you're gonna do, then you'll have to as we did before with the with the conflict. Like you'll each narrate like the. A short scene about like your part that you play in sort of like this conflict um, with this other group of dogs and uh, we'll see if you've uh, and once you've all picked uh, before you've all well the the idea here is that like if you all happen to pick the same approach you'll probably succeed but if you are in fact working at cross purposes, uh, the the conflict will not immediately be resolved. Um, so yeah, that's sort of sense. the stakes, I guess, uh, for this little conflict. Everybody have their uh, hold on. Come on, <laughs> London. I guess it means you don't have a hand of all the same. Is what that means. I have choices. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright. Yep, we got them all out there. Yep, yep. Alright, well, somebody go first and uh, uh, right. the, there's a there's a, a real a real ruckus <laughs> happening between uh, uh, the, all the dogs. Like, the, the, the shaking off of all the mud. Has, it's like a bunch of stuff happens all at once. So start off with <laughs> Everybody first, what's what's the first thing that happens? Well, I mean, Daly's just going to shrug it off, and you know how dogs will do that weird sort of when they're starting to roll over, do that kind of slide maneuver, starting with their chest and shoulders, and then their butt follows? That's what <laughs> she's doing, and she's just going to roll onto her back, wiggle a little bit to get what landed on her off on the grass, and she's like, she's just going to stay there like, hmm, whatever. <laughs> kind of like cutesy pose for a big dog. She can be cute sometimes. Sure. <laughs> big dogs are, can be cute, especially when they do cute things. Mm-hmm. All right. So I assume that was a heart, right? Yes, that was a heart. Excellent. I should um, get Artemis is also going for the cute angle. All right. Um, Amazing. And when she gets hit with the, the mud, she's going to be real excited and <laughs> like do the whole as soon as she gets hit with it she like does the downward dog like back and forth kind of thing and she looks over and sees that it was um bandit that did this and looks back at andre and goes oh oh that's bandit he's my friend (laughs) and it's just wiggling nice i can i can go ahead and play mine if you'd like michael Sure. What the heck? All right. Uh, so Bandit is, sure, it's mischievous, and it, it had a purpose, but he is trying his utmost to be cute. And I know the face value doesn't matter, but I actually got the Ace of Hearts. <laughs> and Aww. so, yeah, he is this uh, He is this being <laughs> absolutely ridiculous, mouth just gaping, tongue lagging everywhere as he just does this. It's cute. Amazing. Amazing. All right, and uh, and let's see. London, in this example, sees what Bandit is is starting to do and takes off <laughs> toward the snack table. Um, <laughs> <laughs> London climbs up. He, he's going to climb up onto the snack table to try and protect the snacks from getting splashed by mud. <laughs> what a good boy. Aww. He knows uh, dogs are not allowed on the table, but this is a this is an emergency. This is a emergency. higher cost. All right. Mm-hmm. 
All right. Uh, this is, I love this, what has happened here. Um, so you've got three hearts and one club. So uh, the conflict that has occurred is not immediately resolved, but uh, I am, I have been personally charmed by your cute antics. And uh, I love that you guys almost succeeded on this role uh, or on this, this conflict and, and all coming up independently, same things. Um, so uh, there's, uh, I think it's impossible that like a f conflict breaks out, like a f actual like fight is what comes out of this. Um, like nobody's gonna like attack, but there's definitely like, um, like chaos has has been sown a bit, right? <laughs> um, especially with, uh, you know, there's there's big dogs flopping around. There's dogs on tables. There's um, there's uh, this this um, uh, you know you just bust in there, bandit, and you're doing the biggest shake ever, and then the biggest smile ever. It's just kind of like a one-two punch of chaos. Um, <laughs> that uh, you know, I think that's just. There, I think there's probably um, some leashes dropped, some like dogs running. I mean, this is a dog park, so like uh, you know, it, it's just it's just a, a, a um, you know a big scattering of of animals running around, and like, chases are starting. And uh, 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 <laughs> I think the uh, the Andre is kind of like. Uh, it's kind of like now like um sort of like looking down at the mud that that uh has been splashed on his um his perfect gray coat and uh you know you said that this is my friend bandit and he's sort of like oh yes i i <laughs> your friend huh uh uh you know kind of like uh yes i'm giving you sort of a look of like oh i'm so glad i came out here today um <laughs> Uh, uh, let's see, um, so, I think that, I, I think there's also sort of like, um, even though you've done the cutest little look that you have, I think there's also part of this, some, some like, play fighting is also in play, so there's like, um, let's see, another sort of smallish dog, um, maybe like a terrier type dog. Um, uh, like a Jack Russell. Uh, it, I was thinking more of a Scott, uh, a Scotty, Scotty, a Scottish oh. terrier. Um, Scottish terrier. Like, yeah, like Does that uh, that's what do I do. A Scottish accent? No, I don't do <laughs> accents. Um, it's it. I never, as GM, have done accents. Uh, so I will not be doing. I will not be starting tonight. <laughs> uh, um, but this terrier, I think, is like. Uh, uh, you know, it's got that long sort of like real shaggy fur, so it kind of got extra muddy. And mm -hmm. this dog is sort of like, um, uh, what's it? Uh, and I'm trying to come up with a name. Uh, I think the uh, this dog is sort of like it gotten a little extra muddy from your antics, maybe right there in front of where you did your your shaking off um, uh, bandit. And so he's like sort of like almost like rearing up, like, what, what is this? You want to fight? You want to fight me? And kind of like, you know, putting his face out and like showing his teeth and like barking, like, you know, we can fight about this if you want. We can fight about it. Like really, really kind of, really kind of, um, uh, uh, snapping, snapping at you almost. Um, and the, the, uh, you asked about the big dog. I think it's like a, um, what is the, why can't I think of the, the St. Bernard. I think it's a St. Bernard uh, that was the, the big dog that you asked about, uh, daily. So, okay. um, uh, which is, I, I don't know, but so, it, you know, a big dog and, uh, kind of gives you like a look, like you lay down and we're kind of like, I'm chill, I'm chill. But this dog is sort of like unconvinced, maybe, um, by it. Uh, so anyway, there's a lot of stuff happening. And you guys basically have to, you still have to resolve this conflict. Like the 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 conflict has been 
you know, almost in, uh, accentuated by like what's happened, not resolved. So uh, this time you, I'll let you do it normally. And um, I am looking for, uh, it can, you can succeed in any way you want. Uh, we will look for four cards of the same kind uh, for the, now that we're in the second round. And um, you can plan this time. Like you can kind of talk about it. Like I made you do the, the thing before where you didn't. So go ahead and take your full four cards or back up to four cards and uh, you can kind of discuss like what approach you want to take this time uh, right. to, the, to, to really bring this conflict to an end. I don't know. Uh, from from you know, bandit and you know, yeah, this was all fun. Now somebody's actually acting tough with him. I don't know if Bandit would be willing to back down, but he'd probably look over at Artemis because this is this is her party, and it's like he he looks to you know Artemis is like okay, what what's your call? I don't think Artemis realizes the actual, like, the the gravity of the situation at the moment. So, <laughs> um, I think she just kind of sticks, maybe she comes, uh, like, to also play in the mud a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, like, not necessarily to also try and make a mess, but because she thinks, oh, Bandit played in the mud. Um, would that be, would that be considered cute? Or would it be something different? Because I, I just, I feel like she's, she just wants to play. Just wants she to knows play. that That's... all the dogs are here and she doesn't, she doesn't really, uh, she has, <laughs> she's not very smart, uh, and for <laughs> sensing what others feel is a zero. So, I, I mean, think she just thinks everyone wants to play. Because I don't I, know that she's ever experienced an actual, like, dog argument before. I would think that would be friends. So. Yeah, I was, I was thinking the same. So, I, yeah. I, I can contribute to a friend's success. Is that the diamond spades spades diamonds oh, are spades is, spades okay. is the friendship yep. do we have enough people with spades I, uh, I don't have any i only have tri or triangles i only have diamonds <laughs> in the oh. interest of friendship i think london would be happy to try like like bringing some of the treats from the party to some of the mm. other dogs <laughs> as a peace offering all right, I like an it. Interest, and an interest of keeping Artemis's birthday trouble free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Daily right. would just. I... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Well, I was just gonna say it sounds like you're leaning toward the uh, uh, a friendship thing. If you can get the four four spades. Yeah. I mean, I can contribute one just by being like I... super chill. I can also contribute one spade. Oh no. <laughs> I think uh I don't think I can actually. Cuz I uh oh, man. I don't have a spade. And uh I think I'm a cute. Let me look at my character sheet really quick. Yeah, I think I think you chose cute. Cute as your type. Yeah. So I don't think I have the uh the one as a backup. So I would not be able to contribute. All right. Well, if you if you so this this is sort of a, a wrinkle we haven't run to yet. Play like if you can't if you don't have the cards for it, you can't resolve it that way. So you've mm -hmm. got to get your right. four cards to resolve this conflict some other way. Well, do we have enough uh, diamonds? To I have I mean, two diamonds. I have one. Now, did did everybody already draw their cards back up? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just, yeah. You always you get your four. So I have, including my breed size of being big, um, I have three technically. Two on cards, one in breed for teeth. I could play Enforcer with that number if somebody backs me up. 
Well, uh, London's got one for breed also, and then one in hand. So London can contribute too. Hey. Guys, you, you all can show a lot of uh, force then if you want. And that would yeah. be which one are we talking about now? Diamonds. Yeah, diamonds. Diamonds. Yeah. I do have two diamonds. So, uh, if yeah, uh, if that's what you no. if that's what you want to do, you could do it, and uh, uh, then you'll, uh, you know, it, the conflict this conflict can be solved in any of the four ways. So that that'll solve it. I also have two hearts if anyone just wants to be cute. I have no hearts, unfortunately. And a club Zero. if we want to be fat. I do have. Clubs. I have. I have, I have two clubs. We could do. We could do fat if we're looking at four res for the resolution, or if everybody has to contribute one. No, it's it's as a group. You need to assemble okay. four of okay. one type. I have two clubs okay. if we want to go fast. I have a club. I can also contribute to being fast. I also have two clubs that I could do. So, pull my cards down a little bit. Yeah. It's a, so it's In up to case, you how you want to resolve the conflict and what that would look like. So y'all would know daily like if she gets like into a show of force it's just a very she stands to her full height tail just straight back and not up or anything and she just looks more menacing than she technically can be. She can be very menacing. <laughs> but it's very much a Hey, look, I'm a big dog. I know I am a big dog. You're annoying me, kind of thing. If we go with the uh, the teeth. If you go with speed, um, she's just gonna run off, like, playfully nip at the when St. Bernard. Not nip, but, like, just nudge and take off running. Like, hey, come chase me. If she contributes to the speed. So, you're calling that one. Yeah, I feel like this being Artemis's shindig, I'm good with uh, with letting Artemis dictate how we want to resolve. Yeah. Doesn't Cece, if, I fight. mean, if you want to do... Cece, if you're up for the decision. I mean, I'm totally up for the decision. Um, Artemis, Artemis doesn't know how to fight, but she's fast. So right. I, I feel like fast is a good way to try and do it. All right. Okay, so uh, those who can contribute or, you know, whatever, you just need four as a group uh, and anybody can contribute the four and, you know, um, uh, Look at that. Any, anybody <laughs> can contribute any number that will result in the four for the group. And uh, it's, it's fast, but it's also like, any kind of prowess of the body, like, you know, um, like you were talking about, like kind of almost check body checking the other dog and running off, you know, it's sort of like, it's, it's a different sort of show of force than like, um, yeah. Heath, but it's still sort of a display of physicality in some way. Um, okay. so, so if that's what you're going for. Yeah. So yes. there you in go. other words, Daley could still look menacing. It's just more of a friendly sort of menacing, I guess. Well, it's, it's more like, like you described, like you're like, I'm just going to stand up and be present and like, let them know that that would be like, rather than like actually biting them, uh, mm -hmm. you know, okay. that could be the way you describe your, your, your club. Um, or you, like you, the other way is also a good thing. Like sort of like, um, you know, I'm going to run past to try and get them to chase me, you know, like whatever would be a use of your Mm -hmm. physical attributes in some way is what the club represent. Yeah. I think I would go for the uh, just standing up a little straighter and like, hey, if you want to start something, you have to go through me kind of grin. Mm. Okay. Like, like her, full, her right. full size. <laughs> How else is the 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 physical presence uh, of your other doggos? How do well, I started this, so uh, the moment everybody... <laughs> you did kind of kinda kinda start this. <laughs> the moment all the eyes glare at me, it, I take off running. And, of course, uh, a dog is running. A dog has to chase. 
I think that's like, uh, you know, in the three laws of dog, you know, Otix or whatever it would be called, you know. Dog <laughs> uh, oh, Otix? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think that's the third law. You, uh, somebody runs, you must chase. So I am taking off, running underneath the benches, jumping through, uh, like, dog, you know, obstacle course things, having everybody chase me with the goal being to tire everybody out. All right. I like it. Um, Artemis is going to see Bandit take off and immediately, uh, and everyone, like, following, and uh, she's going to get the zoomies. <laughs> she's she's just running. She doesn't really have a particular direction she's aiming for. She's just kind of going around because everyone else is running, so why shouldn't she run? <laughs> oh, my God. And I guess London's going to really fight the urge. Like, he starts coming down off the table and then, like, looks back over at the snacks and gets back up on the table and his staying in place, his stay function kicks in. <laughs> mm. But his tail, his tail is going crazy watching these dogs with the zoomies. <laughs> Excellent. All right. So between this show of like, like you, you like the the play aspects, the chase aspects, the like, hey, you don't really want to start something, kind of <laughs> aspects, the like, the like, no, this is our table, we're guarding it, like, all of those sort of like shows of soft force, I guess, is almost a way to describe it. Um, uh, they work, and it's like, okay, all right, we're not gonna have a, we're not gonna, you know, like this is this is all sort of like, you know, like the almost like the humans could perceive that like oh they almost didn't like each other but then they're getting fine now is kind of what <clears throat> the humans would perceive from like all the things that have happened like the, the, body the language two groups have kind of clashed <laughs> yeah kind of the two groups have clashed together there's been a scene made everybody's barking at each other but now they're just running around you all just run around like like dogs right like there's no longer a conflict you're all kind of in agreement that like we're at the dog park we're gonna just have some fun um, we're just gonna, you know, broken. chase each other around and, and <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. There was sort of like, um, so you all have, as I said, successfully resolved this, uh, with this other dogs and kind of met them and uh, you can, uh, I, uh, I've got, um, I still have to decide what kind of dog this other dog is, um. What's a like sort of a an inverse to the husky? If you're a husky, London, like what is sort of the? Uh, I guess it could be like um, is like a like a golden retriever, sort of like. Well, I mean, what's the opposite dog from a husky, right? Like not not opposite oh, as in like scale or whatever, but like sort of like oh, that's completely different, but kind of the same. Is I'd that, say golden retriever. Is that, yeah. Yeah. Or a German Shepherd. Yeah, a Shepherd would be good. A too. German Shepherd, those are kind of similar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like similar um, build, but different, like typically different personalities. Yeah, that's kind of what I was looking for. Yeah, uh, the, yes. the Shepherds with that. Uh, shepherds are more, you know, protective dogs. Huskies are a little more, are a little bit more work dogs. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's call. But him, a gold, a golden retriever this. is a great like companion dog, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A little less neurotic than husky. Actually, no, I take that back. Golden <laughs> retrievers are definitely neurotic, but in different ways. Well, that's that's kind of where I think I'm gonna put to say that. Um, uh, that's kind of what I was. That's kind of the energy that you've put into uh, London there, Mike. So uh, <laughs> uh, that's kind of where I was going with it. Um, okay, so we've got a. The Weimaraner that's also on Instagram, uh, named Andre. You've got the uh, the are terrier looking, that's. Are we looking to form a, like mm -hmm. a bizarro group of our characters? Like it's the. That is what I'm trying to do. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, so you've got the 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 the, the aggressive terrier, 
that kind of is an echo for Bandit. You've got the <laughs> St. Bernard, who's kind of an echo for um, for you, Daly. And then the Golden Retriever, that's sort of like giving off the same energy, but in a different direction uh, to you, London. Uh, so anyway, and, and I've got names for them if you want to meet them and like, I, I could either tell you all the names, kind of like meet, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to role play a bunch of dogs. Um, uh, and like, have I you think you picked the wrong game for that, Matt. <laughs> I know, I know, didn't I? I just mean like, I don't want, I don't, I don't want to do like a scene where I role play each one of these dogs and meeting each of you, whatever, you know, we don't need to meet each one each way, but like, um, it would be fun to the, know. So you've got Andre, the, right? Or you got Andre the Weimaraner, Snips the Terrier, Benny the Saint Bernard, and I Cicero the Golden Retriever. All right, uh, Cicero. And so they're they're kind of like this other group that you've now encountered. Um, okay, uh, and you have fun at the party. Uh, the 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 pup cakes are delicious. No chocolate, but. Uh, there's some other treat inside that, like, yeah, um, I don't know. I guess they're just like a, a puppuccino is just cream, right? But like the um, what's what's a what would a pup would they be like? They wouldn't be like, I wouldn't be like corn meal and ham Actually, would they or something. Like that. Is that like a savory pup cake? Would that be a thing? Pumpkin and maple with eggs and right. maybe a little bit of fish sauce. All right, that I know sounds that sounds right. strange, but. I, I it's actually, not us I mean, eating it, it's the dogs. Yeah. I, I, I mean, that, those flavors don't life. sound bad to me. Like, I'm like, savory, <laughs> and you get the... Yeah. yeah. I have IRL recipes for dog treats because I am thinking about making some for my own dog. So, a sweet potato is a binder. Um, you sure. can use a really good... Um, you can either use almond flour or a good non-wheat flour. You can even use a wheat flour if you know your dog doesn't have allergies to wheat which is a common allergy among dogs. Uh, my dog has that. <laughs> um, and so it, it's really fun. And the heck, we can even like toss in and say Becky made the dog treats because she's like that. We already established that she that. makes shortbread. So why not like- Right, you did. You did already establish that she makes shortbread. <laughs> she's a straight- Yeah, maybe bread. Buffy reached out to Becky. Mm. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Becky does the Instagram okay. thing for food. Beck Buffy does the Instagram thing for influencing. Why not? <laughs> that makes sense. It'll give Becky a friend. <laughs> Are all of our moms going to be Instagram influencers? <laughs> I don't Sorry, don't no. imagine Tommy is at all interested in, in Instagram. Yeah, uh, Tommy's not really an Instagram dad um, so much. He strikes me as an all trails dad. He's definitely an all trails dad. <laughs> His all trails profile is full of pictures of he in London Aww. on trails. <laughs> I love it. If my dad is here, uh, you know, my, my best friend, he's probably outside the park, leaning up against the fence with the, you know, with the beer in hand, watching and laughing. <laughs> that, yeah, I can see that. Like Excellent. That. All right. So birthday party was a success. Uh, Armis, one year old. It's it's very Instagrammable. Um, uh, Buffy gets a lot of photos. Uh, so I I think we're oh, well. We're not quite there yet. So um, going to uh, it's sort of like a, a chapter one, chapter two kind of thing. But I th think. We have to cut to uh, the next day, and each of you are kind of like enjoying the morning. Um, yeah. uh, and this is sort of like like whatever you do, whatever part of your morning routine is. Basically, like what I'm imagining is like after this big day that you have today, uh, the next day, like what, what would be the first time, think about like the first time you would be outside that day and what that would what that what part of your more regular routine with your best friend would um, be the first time that you would go outside in in a typical day and um, so once you've got that in mind what uh, what happens 
for each of you when you see this or, or uh, when when you when that when that occurs is that um, you uh, you see a cat that has a, that uh, uh, will talk to you um, uh, which is a little weird but that's and we'll we'll get the message uh, in a second because it'll be the same message for all of you but I want you to tell us what that what that morning routine is for for you so um, go ahead uh, sorry um, or it doesn't have to be morning routine I guess it could be um her misses morning routine every day is that she and her mom get up at 745 and um, her mom does a little bit of morning yoga, and then they go to the Star Pups down the road. That's um, right. That's right. And and get her a puppuccino, and her mom gets her iced coffee. And then they they walk there and home. So. So where would the, where would a like maybe a um, like if you leave your house or you. Leave wherever you live and you head down the street to go to the place. I assume it's, I was thinking it's like a, a, a walk or do you do you get in the car and it's drive? It's a walk. It's, it's just a few okay. blocks away to the nearest uh, coffee shop, so. So maybe the cat that has a message for you is waiting kind of like at the driveway. Um, okay. Like at the end of the driveway, like kind of in the tree lawn part of the, at the, uh, in front of the house and kind of is able to say a message to you uh, when you when you appear. Okay. Did that, does that work? Yep, sounds good. Okay, and then, so somebody else, tell right. us what uh, the first time you go outside for the day looks like on the day after the party. Uh, I'll go. Uh, Becky and Daly kind of just go out onto the front porch Kind of, it's a nice enough day, I'm assuming. Kind of nice, mild weather, right? Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Um, Becky refills the wildlife water bowl, the cat food bowl on the floor of the porch, and then the cat food bowl that's kind of perched up on one of the pillars of the porch support that's for the crows that she's adopted <laughs> or have adopted her. <laughs> Uh, refills their bowl with cat food and peanuts and Daly's just watching this all from her little cushion outdoor bed in one corner so I think the morning routine so this is like an open open porch like an open porch mm -hmm. all right so I imagine that uh the cat then kind of like you you almost like it kind of comes almost like seemingly from nowhere like maybe it was like like if you're on the bed on the porch and you're watching uh, Becky do the stuff out in the yard, like it kind of like hops up like from the, uh, or maybe almost like steps out from like uh, <laughs> something else that was on the porch. Like there's like, there's Probably like a, a, just a chair the for, <laughs> yeah, well, there's like, I was imagining like almost like there's a wicker uh -oh. side chair that, that uh, Becky sits in outside. Mm -hmm. So then like the cat, it was just underneath it and you, like are you settled down in your little bed watching, uh, you know, uh, Becky change the water stuff, uh, uh, you know, and then like this cat just kind of like leans out from under the chair to talk to you. And like, Daly is 100 cool with cats because she is a former rescue. It, they put her in the kitten room at one point, and the kittens just used her as a bed, so she's 100 percent uh, cool with cats. She likes cats. All right, excellent. <laughs> Uh, so, London or Bandit, where, where's the first time you're you're outside your residence for the day? I mean, I, yeah, I'm like it's it's early morning, uh, you know, pick up and drop off. You know, I it's mean, the, uh, the the my dad wakes up, he slides the glass door open. I go out in the yard to go do my business, circle back by, have some water, notice that hey, there's some treats left over that my dad picked up from the party. Have a couple bites of that, you know. No, that's going to be an early morning for my dog. All right. So 
Is this like in the backyard or is this like in the uh, like a residence or is this like because you like the garage? Are you like, I, the, I, is it like a live work situation? The I garage? Like a, that, yeah, uh, live work. Definitely. So it's, you know, it's OK. And he uh, that's kind of his thing is that that's about it. So, I mean, it's I, I doubt there is actually a fence on the property except around the garage area to keep all the vehicles safe. Okay, nice. so I think the cat kind of like it's it's because all of these things are sort of like um, I think it like doesn't disturb you while you're talking about doing your your morning business there. Uh, so it's like in between you're heading back to the treat bowl that you know the treats are there, um, and the cat kind of just kind of comes in from somewhere else, like almost like. A, just happened to be walking through the yard right right in such a way as to meet you right there where you're about to meet your treats at the food bowl um and then lastly you london what's what's the first time you're uh outside the, the, in the day well you know early morning routine typically is uh tommy and london go for a jog um being a former cop police officer Tommy likes to try and keep that old routine. So they go for a run just around the block. Nothing, nothing major. That's the first time they're going to be outside that day. All right. Mm -hmm. So imagine then it's sort of like um, the same sort of situation as uh, Artemis, right? Like you're, 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 you're walking out, you're getting ready. You're like maybe doing, I imagine uh, Tommy's doing like, you're, you're kind of, I imagine you being like ready to go. You're kind of like excited. You know what this is. Maybe Tommy's doing like oh, a yeah. little bit of those London, leg London, stretches. Yeah, London's running back and forth kind of in the driveway. Like, you know, come on, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so like there's, there's sort of like, um, uh, we did a, the, so there's like uh, some sort of like, uh, 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 maybe like one of those yards that has like the, I don't even know what I don't even know what they are. They're like they're either water lines or like power transmitter type things. But some yards have those like utility boxes that are sort of like in the front yard or whatever. Um, so I imagine something like that is there in near the house. So you're running back and forth, ready to go on this run. And then there's this right there from behind comes this cat to talk to you. And so this is the. Uh, message that the cat each one of you receives this message and it's basically an identical message from each of them is that um, uh, tonight Torgriff and the hunt will be in the in the woods it's outside of town uh, you you know you're you are invited to come to the to the to take part in, uh, you know, the, there'll be storytelling and uh, uh, feast. The, the feast and the storytelling, Torgriff will be there. Uh, you, and that is not uh, unfamiliar information to each any of you. Like, this is like, if you want, I think we'll do a, um, this will kind of close up our uh, first half of the show once you do this. Um, It'll be, um, yeah, so if you want to make like a, a uh, any of you want to make like a knowledge roll, this would be, you would immediately know what this is. And if, even if you don't know, the cat doesn't stick around to explain. The cat is like, you're invited to see Torgriff tonight in the woods behind, the woods to the side of the, you know, the woods behind the uh, dog park. Uh, you know, there will be storytelling. And that, that's, then it leaves. It's like almost like, and for each one of you, it's almost like, you're like, did that even happen? Wait, mm -hmm. what? What? And you're like, you, you'd like, if you look after the cat, the cat's already gone. It's back under the bench or around the building, wherever. It's it's like, it's a very quick interaction, uh, but it's sort of uh, almost disturbing in its like frankness, its bluntness and, and the import of it. And again, if anyone wants to make a, a knowledge roll for your doggo, um, two successes will tell you everything you need to know about the doggo. Um, and if you're not familiar, then, you know, that we can play that when we come back from break here in a second. Okay. 
Yeah, I'll, I'm gonna try my hand at that. Yep, same. Mm -hmm. it, reminder question. Maybe. Yeah. Um, if we spend a point on a reroll, is it all die or one for one, right? It's you. The point spent lets you reroll as many as you want. Okay. But you can't further manipulate the dice once you've rolled them. So, like, yeah. if, if they fail the second time, you can't reroll them again. You know. Got it. Fair. I didn't have any more points to spend on a reroll. <laughs> I was just like, yeah. I my first roll rolled like two ones and a two, and then my second roll rolled two twos and a one. So, I don't know anything about this, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I got two fives. Alright. So, you know what it is. What else? Uh, anybody else got it? I also uh, got two fives. Got no smarts. Artemis so ain't got no I smarts. To, I She'll have to ask. To you're just... Dice. You're just <laughs> barely... You're just barely out of puppies training. You're 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 gonna have to ask your your elder dogs. This feels like um, an annual thing, and she just wasn't here for it last year. So. I mean, that's a good point. That's a good. That's point. a good way. You that's just actually had your first birthday. That's a great way to describe it because what the Griff is the name of the first one of the first doggos. Like basically, the first doggo to be friends with a human was named Griff. And so there's a whole line of doggos who have various, they are various griffs. And the griff comes around every once in a while and tells the stories from the doggo before times. And so this is sort of like, this is like, you may have had fun yesterday, but this is sort of like the, the ultimate dog revelry is like, oh, when the griff comes to town and all the dogs come and hear the stories from you know, from before times, uh, that's, that's, that's really, um, a, a big, a big festival type event. And it sort of happens randomly, not exactly. It's sort like of unpredictable. It's Dogopalooza. Um, it's Burning Dog. It's, uh, <laughs> any of those kind of like, uh, connections that you want to make. It's, it's like a storytelling festival. We have one in, in my town. There used to be... <laughs> I don't, it's called the Corn Island Storytelling Festival. It's, uh, it's like that. Um, uh, Corn Island uh, uh, later sank in the river, uh, but it's still called the Corn Island Storytelling. Oh. Um, <laughs> anyway, so you've received, so this is the news. The newest news is that Torgriff, one of the Griffs, will be here tonight to tell stories, to, to, to meet with other doggos. And, I'm so glad uh, that the I new think... chapters could stop by. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> it's more of like a summons than like an, a news announcement. These are like heralds of Torgriff. Uh, official summons more than like de -de 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 breaking news type cats, you know. Um, I, I don't know how to make a pun out of that, though, so. Breaking news <laughs> cats. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, news, news cat sirs. Um, <laughs> uh, all right, so with that dramatic revelation, Torgriff is coming. I, we are halfway through our time, right? So do we do our bio break now? Or, uh, yeah, yeah that, absolutely. Is that... Um, sure. if, if everybody's ready to go, we can do it. Yeah. And uh, we'll uh, be back with you all uh, in a little bit. All right, yeah. see you all in 10 minutes. Be right back.
All right, well, we are back. Sorry I took us a little moment there. Just a little bit of technical difficulties. Uh, that said, really quick, I want to be sure to put it out there that this week we have a pretty good lineup. Uh, obviously, we are starting off the week with Hiking Good Doggos here. Thursday, we will be back with Growing Shadows, our Ninja Crusade 2nd Edition uh, actual play. After four or five years, we are about to wrap it up. So you'll want to tune in for that. Then on Friday... We have Chris Hussey coming in to lead our uh, game. Uh, we're doing Battle Lords of the 23rd Century, and they're about to put out a Suede version, uh, Savage Worlds uh, Adventure Edition version of the game, and we are the first ones to get to do an actual play of that online. So that's coming, and Chris Hussey, if you don't know Chris, you need to be following him. He's an amazing actual play person, and back in the 2000s was writing for FASA for Battletech. So mm -hmm. really cool guy. Y'all ought to get to know him. And then uh, Saturday, we are back in with Calvin uh, Johns, and we are doing uh, It's King Pink Darkness. Yes. So I actually have the book right next to me if you want me to show it off. Please, please. You got a second? I do. I just have to get it out from under my pile of water bottles. <laughs> Handily bundled because I have... The bundle edition. Nice. So all these lovely materials came with that bundle. And this. Yep. I have to keep my face in it. This is what we will be playing. I apologize for it being reversed. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to look at my camera. <laughs> it actually is showing up normal for me. I think. Okay. Oh, but but yeah, it's going out reverse for everybody else. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> but so that's coming up on Saturday. So we have a lot of indie games coming through this month. And in reverse, then... I think that's Ping Kink, which is a different game entirely, <laughs> but just as fun. <laughs> All right. But it was, so we have a lot of good indie games coming this way. Be sure to check out and follow us on social media. Go jump in our Discord. All right. Yeah. But that said, we're going to go ahead and start our story back up and turn it over to Matt. Oh, Hey, hey, we're back. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, you all are... You've just... You had the message that uh, this... Uh, well, I guess those of you who recognize what it means uh, for Torgriff to be coming uh, know what it means. And the rest of you uh, do not. So you have the rest of the day to kind of like... Um, meet with each other and kind of like kind of come up with a strategy um if some of you uh um you probably some of, i don't know how old I'll, as to, if some of you may have been to one of these uh hunts before um mm -hmm. but uh definitely like the definitely artemis you probably haven't been uh before and I don't know the other people who missed their knowledge rolls. There might be some why uh, yeah. either you're you're young or you didn't. You just haven't had the opportunity. So, um, yeah. Daly's only roughly about two years old. So, okay. So it's possible that you can meet together and talk about it to catch each other up, or um, you know, you have the day basically to 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 take any sort of actions that you want to take in preparation for. Um, uh, Torgriff arriving tonight. All right. And then, and these are interactions with each other, right? That you would have in, you know, the daily course of, you know, just hanging out. Just hanging out, just being dogs in the neighborhood. You can you can talk to other dogs. Yeah. Oh yeah. The the moment Tommy uh, slips away to go run some of his daytime errands, London certainly runs out the the doggy door in the back. And heads through the neighborhood looking for the rest of the pack. Yeah. Daly's just still sitting on her front porch. And she probably gives a little nudge to uh, Becky and then just wanders off to meet you. I'm probably splooting by the mail the mailbox, just out there <laughs> waiting for the, for the mailman. He, he gives a treat every time he comes by. Aww. <laughs> um, I think... Artemis is hanging out in the the backyard. Uh, I think her her mom might be doing a little bit of gardening. 
uh, to take some pictures of, and she's out just laying down. She's she's not like laying down like a normal. She's like full on splayed out. You know, <laughs> she's a uh, sunning. <laughs> yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. Getting her tan on. So do the then the three of us maybe meet up and then head to Artemis's place. Sure. Especially if we can get treats from the mailman. <laughs> Wait for the mailman, then go meet up with Ar- Artemis. I'm like, sure I imagine, like, like imagine, like, party too. one of us meeting at the, like, one of us running into Bandit at the mailbox and, like, seeing what Bandit's doing and knowing and just sitting down. And then <laughs> another one wanders up and sees two other ones, you know, just sits down. So there's three of us, like, sitting in a row waiting for the mailman. <laughs> That's hilarious. Sure. I like it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, great. So you get your, you get your, uh, your little doggo treats of one, two, three. The mailman is sort of like, kind of gives, uh, kind of gives you bandit. Like you throw that out there that you've got that relationship, but, uh, the, 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 the mailman this time is sort of like, all right, like three of you is, this is fine. But like, kind of gives you like a little, like, don't, don't, don't get too, don't 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 get, don't get too used to this, you know. Um, uh, just it's just a little little look there between you, but the, you all get a treat from the, the mailman time. So, uh, you know, it's fine. It's not like the best dog treat ever, but you know, it's a treat. You know, it's a treat. I imagine for daily, it's a little tiny. <laughs> It's like one of the staples. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I imagine. I, I, I imagine like if the mailman's giving out treats to dogs, it's probably like this is like um, it's almost like just puts a handful of kibble in the pocket, so it's like it's a little treat, you know, oh. like okay. you know, it's a taste. It's a taste, um, especially for you, Daly. I don't um, know what so the big deal is. I love it. It's perfect. Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> tre- treats for the mailman. Like it's great. <laughs> One bite of kibble is as good as another. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, so you, you all are the three of you are together, and you're going to go talk to Artemis, about, like this thing. Like you know, she just had her first birthday yesterday, so like this is probably definitely like a, um, especially for you, uh, uh, London and uh, Bandit being old, a little older than that. Like you, mm-hmm. you know more of what a big deal this is. Um, to go and meet a griff. Yeah, and you know, and kind of while we're running, while we're running, probably toward Artemis's place, like I would be sure that London would be like, "Torgriff's coming! Torgriff! Torgriff's coming!" <laughs> uh, explain for the newbie here. <laughs> uh, Torgriff, uh, Torgriff tells stories, and uh, there'll be a hunt, and uh, there'll be food, and uh, uh, all the dogs will be there. Uh, 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 it's a good time. It's a lot of fun. Uh, uh. All right. Sounds like my kind of time. Let's go get Artemis then. I imagine yeah. Bandit's just way too out of breath trying to keep up with you running to really <laughs> add too much right now. I imagine it's... Isn't, isn't Bandit riding, <laughs> riding daily? You could just hop on. Uh, I don't know. This is, pretty, this is David quick. the Gnome. What 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 is happening here? Dogs riding dogs. This is not a. Um, that's fine. I imagine, I imagine like London's just going reasonably fast. Daly's just kind of trotting along, no problem. Right, right but <laughs> one, I think I London's am the doing wind. the. Yeah, London's doing the kind of like the the going the back and forth. It's not like a direct line. Uh, his excitement is, you know, he's got it. He's panting and he's just kind of running back and forth around the group as they're moving toward Artemis's place. Yeah. Daily, the excitement, the excitement's a lot. I can um, understand that. <laughs> as soon as Artemis hears her friends out front, uh, she's going to wake up from her nap kind of with a jolt. Uh, she's going to look at her mom who is currently distracted, um, in the back corner of the yard uh, and she's going to take her secret exit which is that she jumps on top of the weird shaped bush that's uh, uh, 
like three feet off the ground. She leaps on top of that and then jumps over the fence and goes. <laughs> right. oh. All the while making sure that her mom doesn't see this. Her mom just thinks she went back inside. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. All right, perfect. So the four of you are together now in the front of Artemis's house, and you can have whatever conversation you uh, want to have, make whatever plans you need to make. So, uh, hi friends. Hi, hi. So, feeling good, worthy girl. Yeah. <laughs> the hunt. The hunt is tonight. Uh, yeah, the Griff is hunt, coming. Hunt? The Griff. You know, Griff. Name You're a little it. young, maybe. <laughs> Griff. Uh, and and name, explain it to him. Explain it to him. Names for the first dog. Uh, first dog that uh, had a best friend. And so uh, a griff comes, tells stories, and we all have a hunt. And there's food. Food. You have a way to get out food. at night? Uh, say, same way as, as now. Good. Doggy door. Yeah. And Jimmy lets uh, me sleep, sleep outside ever so often if I want to, so I should be fine. London, we need to break you out. No, no, I can get out. I can get out. Okay. <laughs> so where Tommy we... lets me walk, and then he falls asleep on the couch. <laughs> where do we want to meet up, then? Entrance to the woods, not too far away. Right, right. the woods is... Uh, and you know the woods, because the woods uh, is where the, the, the fort that has the tire swing entrance that you talked about. Like, it, you know, it's the same woods. Like, do we all know where this is located? I don't know. That was that was John's story element. So, like, I would think so. I mean, that was kind of like my idea was, you know, the old clubhouse that we all hang out at. Okay, cool. So that's in the same woods that that this, you know, the you've got kind of like the the dog mm-hmm. park adjacent to the woods. In the woods is this this old fort, and then beyond that is the lake shore that uh, was also in the neighborhood. Um, cool. So there's kind of a, a wooded this wooded area between the the dog park and the lake. I guess is kind of where you know uh, you know where that is basically. Yes. Okay. Awesome. So meet meet when the sun's down. After, right. Sounds good. After, after night meal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But don't get, don't fill up. No, don't. That's right. Food, feast. Food. Are we? Do we actually bring anything to this? Or I mean, is that kind of like a tradition? Or how does this work? Um, you, do you, do you, um, do you, do you think you've been to one before? Uh, uh. Or you just know what it is, like I, what do you? I would imagine I've been to one before. Maybe it's okay. been a, you know a couple of years, but yeah. Okay. I think yeah. I think maybe last year was was London's first because he's London's relatively new to the neighborhood. Okay, so yeah, I mean it is it is like it's definitely like a thing where you can it's like it's it's sort of like the more the merrier, right? So like there is. Um, it, it's called the hunt, but like it, it kind of depends like on um, what what people can bring, right? Like they um, and and there's a lot of neighborhood there's a lot of neighborhood dogs who are able to bring some stuff, but then there's also sort of like uh, I mean it, it's it's sort of like a, a celebration of of primeval dogginess, and so like hunting some like small animals and stuff like that also is kind of can be part of it and so like there's like fresh kills here not just like dry kibble like it it it's sort of like and and if you bring like definitely like dogs like treats right so if you bring some uh as you described it last week uh black bag buffet is that what you called it <laughs> uh, or was it the black bag special uh yeah. you know there's some th- there'll be interest in that kind of stuff uh, for sure but it's also like um, definitely like a time to sort of practice 
uh, maybe skills that you don't necessarily use at other times uh, of the uh, or, or uh, older ways of living, perhaps, is maybe some way to talk about it, you know. So there is, there can be a hunt aspect to it in that way. Yeah. Okay. So if that, I think, hopefully answers your question there, John. Yeah, uh, yeah. If anyone mentions bringing something, Artemis is going to bring the, the doggy bag of what's left of her, her cupcakes from her party. I will yeah. find something. Becky's probably got a bag of scraps that Daly can take off with. So. So if she was going to put in the compost pile? Mm-hmm. And then, like, the or I guess failed would... attempts at the cupcakes from the other day. <laughs> uh, the, the batch that was cosmetically, uh, it, you know, yeah. whatever. Didn't didn't look good. Didn't come out right. It was less aesthetically pleasing than the others. Right. Not not, not good enough for uh, social media cupcakes. Yeah, the practice batches and things like that. Right, right, exactly, exactly. Maybe uh, a little too much fish sauce in one of the batches. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't even want to imagine what it smelled like. <laughs> London's going to spend the afternoon using his uh, surviving away from home mm. skills to try and scrounge up something interesting to bring. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, so, what kind of. So, that's your. Um, that's like one of your traits, right? The, yeah. 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 Surviving. Right. Or so I've got yeah, away from home. Okay, I, so I've got I've got one point in that, mm-hmm. and I'd like to spend. I'll roll three additional out of my pool. Okay. Just to see if I can come up with something really cool. Sure. Not great. Let's uh, let's spend that last point to re-roll. Looking at your. All right, so the last, the re-roll gets me two fives and a six. Okay. Uh, all right, well, that's that's pretty good. I mean, that's, uh, I think that's interesting enough to find, I think that's good enough to find pretty thing that you're, that you would describe as interesting. Like, um, what? how interesting of a thing are you looking for? Like, so, like, as far as something that's possibly a food item, I would say... Um, his nosing around the neighborhood and the the, the edge of the woods turns up uh, part of a uh, deer carcass. All right. And he's able to get a he's able to get like the backbone. All right. All right. That's that's impressive. Hardcore. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Daly's definitely impressed. <laughs> Anybody else want to do any daytime preparations uh, for this, or? Um... I'm. Yeah, actually, I'm. I'm going to be. Uh, I'm not a survivalist uh, dog. I don't mm-hmm. have those kind of skills, but I know, you know, human machinery and stuff like that. And I, my, uh, my best friend had a subway sub or a su- su- way I guess I should say for uh, you know so they don't you know say anything but uh, I'm gonna go nose nose up in the uh, refrigerator door grab it out and set it you know set it outside take it through the doggy door so it'll be ready for me to take that night because nobody wants okay. a cold sub right yeah, so it'll be nice and warm yes exactly <laughs> after two days in the fridge fragrant Perfect. <laughs> but uh so i can roll on that if you want me to uh, with... uh yeah i mean i think if it's in the refrigerator now i think it might have to be i think that's fiddling with fiddling. human stuff yeah yep i actually put my other pip uh the pip we got last game in mm-hmm. fiddling so i actually have two dots on fiddling all nice. right so, so you're uh, darts, yeah I'm gonna take with, yeah. With more dice. 
two of my smarts to put with that, so I'll be rolling four dice, and then I'll save the other two for rerolls. And I only need to reroll one of them. So I got a six, a six, and a five. Man, you guys Ooh. are just tearing it up. <laughs> and that got Somebody's me my tested. last five, so a six, six, and a five, and a five. Well, you're just, you, you just, it's like, it, it's like you have hands. You just nose that door open and just you get it right out uh the it's right there on the shelf like right you're you know relatively small but it's like right there on the like bottom shelf um maybe oh. maybe uh jimmy put it down there to keep it this cold as possible uh okay. but it makes it right at dog level for you to get in there with and that many successes maybe there's more than one sub like maybe you, there's one forgotten behind hey, I, it. Like like <laughs> bought like purchased maybe like a couple for lunch this week. <laughs> I'm not that devious. I, I I you know, I share with I share with all my pack, even my best friend. So he can have he can have the other one. The, the one that he forgot was in the back of the fridge already, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> One's as good as another, right? <laughs> Oh. All right, excellent. Any other any other prep uh, that you want to do, either uh, daily or uh, in anticipation of this? Like you kind of you got maybe a little bit the two of you have a little bit maybe a little bit less sense of what to do or what the you know like uh, I don't know. But then you also like I don't know maybe you're excited for the first time. I don't know. I don't know. How do you how do you feel? I think daily is going to attempt to sneak some of the stuff into one of those canvas bags like the the market totes just to make it easier to carry so all right sneaky uh yeah i mean sneaking is more um like walking around quietly so like yeah if you're trying to like and she's trying to walk around do this, quietly. yeah you're trying to do this without being noticed i think yeah you're gonna have to do that yeah yeah she's got a pip and sneaking she's gonna spend two of her Brawn points in the extra die. Uh, five and a six. I'm gonna use that last uh, brawn points to reroll that last die. Four and four. So two successes of five and a six. Yeah, I think that's enough. I mean, you're not like trying to sneak past heightened security or whatever. You know, um, it's just... She's just a bigger dog, and she's trying to, you know, not alert anything. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. And what about you, Artemis? Do you have anything you want to try and accomplish, or are you just going to go and see what see what it's all about? Um, so she definitely wants to bring that the leftover right. bag of, of cupcakes. I think hers are also in the fridge, but I think right now she's still doing some training with her mom to do cool stuff for Instagram. Um, and so right now, I think she knows how to open the fridge, but she hasn't figured out how to close it. <laughs> and so she's going to spend her afternoon, um, like, trying to convince her mom to work on that. Uh, and then when they, they do start working on that skill, I think that that's going to be her just like, she's, she's doing it for the Instagram according to her mom but what she really wants to do is not let her mom know that she took the doggy bag out <laughs> all right um is that does that is that like performing or something um let's see i'm trying to i'm looking here at the skills mm -hmm. uh yeah i think i think performing maybe fits it best um okay. Or, uh, yeah, you said you're not a very smart dog. So I was gonna say you might, it, yeah. You she, could use she'd give herself away if we were doing smarts. Right. So, <laughs> with her whole one die. Okay, right. so I actually, I put a pip in performing, the one that we earned. So now I've got sure. two in performing um, and I've got five in bronze. So I'm gonna actually take three of those. So then I'm rolling five dice. Nice. Um, 
And I'm gonna use one of my remaining to re-roll because I got two sixes and then a three, two, one. Um, and now we've got a six, five, and a three. So I've got three sixes uh, and a five. Yeah. So again, you you're you you've all <laughs> succeeded. I have mastered closing that fridge door. Right. It's it like looks. Sweet. Uh, it looks great on the uh, on the re or Instagram. On the re <laughs> uh, isn't that what it's called? Or yes. <laughs> uh, you know, she films you just like, and you're just, you're just sort of like, you just shimmy right up and just close the door, or like grab it, open it, like you're just, oh, it's so, it's such a, it's such a <laughs> this funny. This is the most focused she's ever been on a task, and her mom is absolutely amazed. Oh. Yeah, I think, I think that's right. I think that's right. I think, I think it's, uh, it's definitely a real, um, uh. I want to call it like it's like a bonding. It could be a bonding moment, except that like you're kind of like, kind of not really doing it, or I mean, you're being just slightly bit facetious. But you can kind of feel it both ways. You're like, ah, oh, this is great. This is great. I'm doing it with my, but also sort of like, also I'm fooling her. Huh? <laughs> my mom now trusts me very much to be able to open and close the door, but she doesn't realize. <laughs> that now I can just take whatever I want. <laughs> Sutterfuge. I approve. Sabotage. Okay, so um, you guys are all set up then for uh, this adventure, and um, I know you, you kind of were talking about it earlier, but you've all got your sort of like ways that you can get out of the um, of the house at night. I was kind of going to make you roll for that, but it's, you've, we've already done these rolls here, so I think we don't need to, uh, you don't need to escape your own house. I think you can all get out of your own house without too much trouble. Uh, it might be a little bit, um, like it's a little bit unusual, right? Because you don't usually go out at night, uh, probably most of you. I don't know. Uh, I, I would I would think it's a little unusual, but maybe, maybe I'm wrong is that right is this is this something you're trying to um how confident do you feel that you have to like oh yeah uh you know the the best friend's gone to bed like it's time for me whatever now. i just like every night i go do what i want right or is it i don't know i mean daily sleeps most of the day given half the opportunity so she's probably spent plenty of nights just relaxing in the grass in the backyard so she's pretty confident she can get out all right Artemis is also pretty confident because she's got her little collar in the yeah. door and she can just go out and jump mm -hmm. the fence. London knows that if Tommy falls asleep on the couch, if I wake him up to let me out, he'll just fall right back asleep. <laughs> I'm right. pretty sure Bandit is like, you know, with his with his best friend, his best friend probably is like, uh, if you want to sleep outside, fine. He, he probably even put a little doghouse out there, you know, for those oh. nights where he does. Yeah. There you go. You're the guard dog on duty for all the cars. <laughs> I sound ferocious in the dark. Don't we all? I imagine, actually. <laughs> Don't look at the sound it. <laughs> all right. So you guys are able to get out. It's nighttime. There's a lot of... Um, it, it just feels like almost like... Uh, I don't know, like that sort of like um, static electricity feel in the air. You're so excited. Like this is sort of like a perfect night for being outside. Um, there's definitely like maybe not a full moon, but like pretty full. Um, uh, it, it's definitely like going to be full moon soon. So you're kind of like all of that almost like nervous energy of like, yeah, yeah, we're getting out, do this thing. Um, you're meeting up like it's it's bright enough outside to see. And uh, you guys are, uh, you all head out from your respective places. And I think you talked earlier about how you were going to meet at the dog park or meet at the edge of the woods. Is that, yeah. is that, am I remembering correctly from yeah, like when you said woods. that like 20 minutes ago? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, okay. So you guys are doing that and you're all together there and then ready to go. And, and like, as you are moving to the dog park from your like various, from the street that you all, the streets where you all live, like, you, I mean, you see other dogs, like, they're sort of like, I mean, this isn't like, like, and, and there are other people moving in this direction. It's almost like, um, 
it's a little bit of that feel like when you go to some sort of event in like downtown, right? Where like you're all parking in the parking lots and you're all walking in the same direction. Of course, direction. this is the biggest thing that's happening in town tonight. So we're, we're all going to go this way. And like um, it, it's that kind of a feel with, with seeing other dogs coming uh, from the other streets that you're nearby and some you know and like some of your new friends like uh, uh, whose names I wrote down and I've already forgotten, Andre and <laughs> And Benny, you know, uh, you can find them amongst the crowd of dogs as you all kind of like stream into the woods. And you get closer to the dog park, there's more dogs. As you get to the dog park, there's more dogs. And then, and everybody's kind of like, and everybody's got their like little things that they're bringing. And it, there's this, this uh, again, the energy of the night is full as like, you can smell all the different good things that each of you have brought. Like you're all kind of, uh, you've got your little cardboard sacks or uh, cloth sets, shoulder bags with stuff that you've <laughs> wiggled into. And, uh, you know, um, you aren't the only ones to be bringing stuff. And then, you know, here's London with bringing along this, like, uh, juicy in parts and sort of weirdly dry in other parts, uh, like, bunch of bones. And it's like... I literally of- imagine it like when you see those pictures of the dogs carrying the stick that's a little too big for them. Like, so it's a big, like, you know, a big piece of backbone and it's just like, he's got it. And it's like a little heavy on one side. So he keeps like tilting a little bit, but he's got it. He's got it. And, and you, you go into the, into the woods, uh, and you know, um, I think maybe since we didn't, uh, so I think, I think we'll do, uh, uh like um i think there's like it's kind of like you're kind of once you're in the woods there's definitely like um it it feels like and, and i don't know like you probably especially london you've been in hiking with with tommy a lot so like you know what the woods normally feel like what the woods normally sound like probably even at night i would imagine like and it doesn't feel like normal at all like this is like there's just so much more movement in the woods like there are dogs everywhere like on there's no like trail really because this is sort of like a i mean there might be a trail but you're not necessarily on the trail like you're just in the woods and there's dogs under on top of every branch or not branch but like every 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 fallen log has like dogs just hopping over it and there's like rustling of of things and and little yips and barks and and um you know, excited noises happening everywhere. The smell of all the other dogs, the smell of all the food. It's just almost overwhelming. It's like you're almost like all caught up in this sort of like sensory overload, right? Um, it's very exciting, very uh, literally stimulating. Uh, yeah. Let me see. I, I'm just yeah, imagining like any poor human stumbling upon the scene and going like, nope, turning it back around and going away. <laughs> Yeah, and there's like uh, as you as you've now entered like the truly woody type area. There's like um, there's like animals here that are like oh these aren't even the, uh, oh yeah, like this isn't a dog. They're, they're like there's coyotes and stuff. they're like kind of mixed in with like what you're what that you're hanging out with. Like there's some real um, you notice uh, now that you're in the leaves, everything's but you can kind of like again with your heightened senses. Like there's. Uh, um, there's dogs that are like they're they're road they're like stray dogs basically like they're road dogs right they're like traveling living rough living living real wild um and it's real tempting to kind of like just kind of get into that that mode of like oh yeah yeah like we're running around wild in the woods it's great it's great um so in this kind of atmosphere this sort of festival atmosphere um what do you what do you all want to do what do you want to like do what do you want to you want to like just uh you know eat some treats do you want to meet some other dogs do you want to like have some win in a like tussle with someone like what do you what do you all kind of what is what is your how are you spending your time in this this festival of of the dogs in the woods at night they're like i would assume they're at something like this is probably some kind of dog games like a um like perhaps like a 
a dog relay race where you grab a stick and like you have to pass the stick to another dog and then like, you know <laughs> uh you know that type of thing or sure. even you know a sniffing competition where you find the smell find the know. smell yeah um oh. yeah i i'm sure both of those are possible you want to you want to roll and see you want to compete in one of these these events see if you uh you out you out sniff or out uh, relay someone could do performing for uh the running or uh sniffing oh, also Probably a, a a dog tug of war. I'm I'm assuming Ooh. as well with a with a big rope toy. Sure. Yeah, I would like to get into the more physical side of things because yeah, Daly's there to have a good time apparently, and like getting into a wrestling match just sounds like right up her alley. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Basically. Artemis likes running, so that relay race, or if they have any sort of just like a distance kind of thing for single runners she, she'd love to get into that because she just man she's got so much energy all the time I have the strange image of an improvised wild uh, what is the dog sport where they run down the lanes and there's a, a greyhound a, not the greyhound uh, thing, uh, the... where they go down at the lane and back but at the end of the lane is a like tennis ball launcher that they just oh. it, and then oh. they have to like catch the ball before it yeah and then they mm -hmm. run back with it i can imagine an improvised version of that <laughs> somehow sure whether it's like a dog like pulling back on like a stick or a branch on a tree and like let's go and it flings a, <laughs> yeah. flings a ball and like a bunch of the dogs run after the ball and then they bring it back and then you know someone else pulls it back again <laughs> i can see that too yeah, I'm sure anything you could imagine that has right. there. Lots of dog games have happened, uh, are are happening. Um, if you want to roll some, like if you actually want to try and win some of these, uh, like with a with a, if you're just doing like a relay or running, like I think you can just roll the, roll some skills for those. Uh, if you actually want to do a wrestle, I think we might do a quick one person card card thing for that. Yeah. Um, I mean. Daily doesn't mind if she wins or loses. She just wants to have some fun. Sure, sure. Yeah, so sure. if you've got, like, uh, I would say if you've got, like, uh, yeah, if you've got, like, I don't know, uh, what did we do? Three, four for the, the other success. So I think, like, yeah, you've got a couple, like, clubs in your hand right now. You could just, like, boom, I'm going to throw them down. And you describe how you win that, win a win a tussle. Um, and you've got your, uh, if you don't have two, you can throw down two, any two cards and first one and then draw, two, you know, if that's, if that's, uh, maybe you'll get them on the second time. I mean, and that, and she doesn't mind losing. She's not a competitive dog. She just wants to have the fun of it. Yeah. So it's like, she'll probably John. lose more than she'll win. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, sorry, grouped. Uh, just to get, give everybody a heads up, it looks like CC lost audio for a moment. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm pausing uh, yeah, the video for present. a moment. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> just one moment. Yep. <laughs> uh, the joys of Discord. Yep. Uh, give us just one second. We're just going to step away a moment and let her come back in. We'll be right back.
All right, we are back in. All right, we're back. <laughs> so much dog fun has happened. Is happening. Uh, did you, um, if you want to do the uh, relay race, uh, mm -hmm. London, since you proposed that, or the yeah. dog chase, yeah. give me a give me a couple performance. Uh, give me a role for performance and All right. uh, that or performing. Is a that is a skill that I don't have, so oh, I'll, hey. spend, I'll spend one die to uh, to purchase it briefly, and uh -huh. then I will spend my other two die to roll. Yeah. So, let's see. Ah, I got one five. I got one success. One five. One success. That's fine. You you you're you're handing off the stick one dog to another. You're participating in this 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 fun event. Successfully handed off the stick. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Successfully performed, and uh, uh, you wanted to do some running, um, Artemis. So I think yeah, that's going to be performing as well. Uh, okay. I think what you said you you just recently uh, upped the stat there, so yeah. you should have um, you should have the ability to to, to roll that yes. with. The... So I've got two, and then five in the bronze stat. So we're going to do the wow. same thing we did last time. Um, that's, a lot of, that's a lot of brawn. You're very brawny. Mm -hmm. I mostly just wanted to be real fast. <laughs> real fast. Real fast. And sneaky. Go fast. Okay, we are going to use uh, my point to reroll, because that was mostly once. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and we came back with Three fives and two sixes on that one. Oh, two sixes. So yeah, you're fast. You, you, you know, maybe you're not the fastest dog in the woods, but like, yeah, you're fast. You're nobody questions. Nobody questions. You're fast. You're fast. <clears throat> um, all right. Uh, anything you are particularly interested in participating in, Bandit, in the the, the this revelry of dogs? You know, uh, if there, it comes to a game of keep away, probably that. But mm. otherwise, Bandit's probably going to be more interested in waiting for, uh, you know, this the, the Griff to be there. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you maybe, um, I think then uh, I almost want to say that like, well, I don't almost. I do, in fact, want to say that like sort of the way that the 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 stream of dogs and and the gathering of dogs has happened that um, they've sort of naturally and you know you sort of know first maybe among your pack because it, you've got that association with the fort is um, that's sort of like the natural sort of like gathering place it seems and so there's sort of like you kind of head over there to kind of check out what's going on and you see some of the some of the uh, the biggest, burliest dogs, and not burly as in like big, like daily, but like just just the they're like the hardiest, wildest living dogs. Like these dogs are not the kind of dogs that like sleep in like soft dog bed or, or worry about dog doors. They're like outside living dogs, and they look like it. Their fur is just thicker and 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 coarser, and they look. Um, uh, a little more weathered in their their features, and uh, they look they they just they just look like dogs that you don't wouldn't want to. You're like even you who like doesn't back down from a fight is like oh maybe I don't want to mess with those dogs. And they're almost like a almost like a cordon around the the fortress that you are the fort that you've got the little um, you know and not necessarily like they're surrounding it in a wall or anything like that, but they're like in the area right and you're sort of like oh you know kind of sense that like oh look the the griff has uh taken over the little fort and uh <laughs> that's what an honor to have the griff take over my fortress uh uh my my hidey spot um uh but yeah you're not it, it's sort of like anyway that's what you observe i guess tell you what you make of that you can tell me what you make of it. uh probably just Find a place nearby and watch, you know, just waiting for the moment. Uh, probably that's like the big thing is like, I want to hear more about it because uh, Bandit kind of uh, 
takes in the whole angle of, you know, being man's, you know, companion and understanding more of like the their part of the world. Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, so yeah, as you're watching, like, there's maybe some um, messengers that come and go. Like you're kind of seeing. There's a lot of like, um, I mentioned the coyotes before. There's like the uh, you, you notice that there's um, coyotes that are coming and going and then maybe catch a glimpse of like a cat like you did before and maybe some birds like almost like almost like the this dog whoever is inside this fortress uh, this 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 uh, wooden uh, treehouse is sort of like it's like you know like it's so important that like dogs don't even work for this dog like other animals work for this dog you know uh, like a lot of messengers it seems to be a lot of messengers coming and going. That's the impression that, you get, that like information is constantly coming in, and orders are constantly going out, or more messages are constantly going out. Is like an owl comes down and sits there, and like, or and then kind of like is looking around, and it, it shares a whispered word with one of the big dogs, and then off again, and then like um, you really see sort of a, a, a real network of information kind of on display, but like. Um, there's almost no uh, domestic animal that's sort of part of it. Like the, um, the there are all these wild, more wild animal part of it. So you all been having uh, fun. There's like everybody's brought all you dogs have brought like uh, the treats that you brought. Like there are plenty to share. Other people have brought them. Like you get to have taste things that you don't usually taste. Like uh, deer spine apparently. <laughs> and uh, you know similar roadkill items, and there's like other wild caught food that like is pretty different from like anything that that you know this isn't something that you get served up in your your kibble bowls at home. You know, like that taste of like a fresh meaty kill is something that probably is relatively unfamiliar. I to view, um, but it, it's sort of like. Um, it's a it's available here if you wanted to um and i i assume you you do but maybe you don't i don't know On daily it's day. available there's definitely sure uh there's definitely people who are partaking i should say that that there are people who are partaking of more of these like you know not mama baked me some dog biscuits but like ah, i captured this rabbit and i'm gonna eat it you know um definitely that's on display. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, after a little while, uh, you've got, uh, it's sort of like everybody kind of starts to gather around and um, it sort of naturally, like after the initial like energy running in and having this free for all and having this feast, meeting all these other dogs. Uh, after that kind of energy starts to dissipate a little bit, people kind of start to naturally come and join uh, behind you, Bandit, and, like, around you, and it's just, like, dogs all around kind of gathering and kind of expectantly the appearance of of, mm-hmm. of Torgriff, who, in fact, does eventually appear. Uh, and this dog is, like, I mean, you, you've seen, like, a husky, like, London. You've seen, like, other dogs that look like that, but, like, when you see Torgriff, Torgriff looks like a wolf. Like, looks like just barely like a dog, you know? Like, this is a, a, a large-looking animal um, that is 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 a dog, but is, is of a sort of dog that just gives you sort of this, like, uh, feeling of... Um, an older time, a place, you know, before, uh, uh, you know, I, civilization, right? Like, it's like from a different time, out of time. Before this domestication. Be- yes. It sort of feels like that. Like, this would be, this is a glimpse into the, into like, almost the, the almost the, uh, the literalization of a mythic. And I need to bring up the thing that I'm going to read to you guys. So I'm going, I did not edit this down beforehand so i'm going to read some of this and maybe skip some of this um uh so torgriff is there and sort of like 
gives sort of a like almost like a uh, like a, a, a sort of like a snort kind of like a, you know sort of kind of um, displeased sort of <clears throat> you know shaking off all of the um, and everybody gets real quiet this is like um, so uh, the the moon is uh, the moon is like I said not quite full but still bright enough that you really get all of the almost this blue glow to like all of the white parts of this 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 uh wild dog's fur and Torgriff says uh you know uh welcome everyone listen my friends uh many hundreds of cycles of the moon ago uh before there was even a moon there was only the great sun, and it blazed hot and harsh uh, in the sky. And this is the story of the first friends. Uh, you know, before the moon, uh, before the sky was broken, and the moon uh, fell down. Um, before the earth felt all the pain that drowned us, um, and all the an all the animals spoke uh, together but they didn't trust each other. They lived in isolated packs, uh, as many still do, uh, but the world was cruel and cold. There were no alliances or bonds, and that all finally changed when the clever human Zot, guardian Griff, defender of her pack, first became friends. Uh, during that time, there was a monstrous wildcat named Kilna who stalked the forests and struck fear into the hearts of all the creatures of the world. Consuming and consuming, Kilna devoured everything in his path. He hunted everything that was smaller than him. Birds, rodents, dogs, humans, always eating the massive beast with wicked fangs and clever claws that could disappear into the night where no one could find him. No one could match the power, the raw power of Kilna. A predator and a hunter. Uh, uh, and it, the hunger of Kilna, the, the great wildcat, was so much that Zot, the clever, feared that Kilna would just consume, in the end, the whole world. So he took up a spear, uh, a mighty fang that was forged uh, from fi with fire stolen from the sun. And he went out to hunt Kilna, but he couldn't find Kilna. Kilna was always able to see him coming and disappear before he could, f could find him. Similarly, Griff, the defender of her pack, saw the how Kilna hunted and consumed, cons always consuming, and she feared that he in the end, Kilna would consume the whole world, destroying her pack. And so she bared her fangs, her fierce weapons of blood and bone, and went to hunt Kilna. But she could not defeat Kilna. She could not best the great wildcat for strength, speed, strong though she was. And this... This is how they came upon each other. Zot the Clever, with his iron spear forged from the tears of the sun, the, the fire stolen from the, from the sun to make uh, something harder than even blood and bone. And Griff, who could find Kilna in the darkness, no matter where he hid, her powerful nose could lead them together to where Kilna was. And so, working together with spear and nose, they were able to track Kilna and uh, hunt the be uh, find the beast in a lair and uh, put an end to the, the ravenous hunger of the, the beast that would have consumed the world. That is how the first friends, the, fir the friendship 
was first formed in, in times long ago. And that is why we remember, but we remember tonight and always our, our, our friends, our first, the first friends, uh, we are, uh, united together, uh, against anything that would consume the world. Uh, always remember, always remember. Or something similar to that, of, of stirring speech of legend. <laughs> I like to think that at the end of it, when when Griff says, always remember, like the crowd of animals, the crowd of dogs, like echoes that. Sure. <laughs> first friends, first friends, always remember. Yes. Always remember. Yeah, yeah that's it. All right, so you that that's it. I mean, there's there's that's like the main story of the of the event, like this 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 recreation and the the way in which um, Torgriff tells the story. Obviously, I form it as well as this like great ancestral dog could have performed it. Um, uh, so uh, it stirs you in the night, the moonlight. Hear the story of. Like, you know what dogs are capable of, and the 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 threat of um, uh, some sort of force which would just would pull you apart. Uh, the the message of being better together is very much clear to you, and it, and it really stirs you in in like a, especially you who haven't been to one of these hunts before, the festival, the, the feast uh, of of the storytelling. Um, it, it's really like it's really moves you in this way that uh, just you feel like more like a dog than ever you have for hearing that like epic story. Uh, so uh, I don't know if anybody wants to add any scenes uh, more to the, to the telling or like ask any questions or like interact with any of the other, um, the elements of the story uh, that I've laid out. Um, you got anything you want to try and do or, or thing? I know that I've, I've, uh, yeah, I don't know. I've kind of set up a conflict. There's no conflict in the, just, <laughs> just revelation of story. Um, it's always fun. Bandit would actually ask a question and that is, uh, you know, we talk about first friends and, but we're you know, and he looks around the rest of like the pack and everything. It's like we're the ones that live with the humans. Why do you choose not to live with them? And he looks at the you know because he's looking at the the guards. He's looking at the Griff, and he's like, "Y'all, what, what is, what is this <laughs> essentially?" Yeah. It's sort of like a, it, it's that tension, right? Like that's, that's kind of the, the point. Like the Griff remembers the way things used to be, um, you know, uh, but doesn't live, you know, the, there's a separation, right? Like the Griff is here to remember uh, the the way the, how things started and and you know to remember where you came from or to, um to show uh the, the the power of uh dog kind from the beginning you know um uh but you know we it's not a um it's 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 a different way of living than you than you have like you live with the fr you live with your best friends you have your friends uh the friends it's different situations you know the the mon the sun eating wildcats uh are a thing of the past right but like this is the, a time you remember the past but you know you still have to live in the present i guess that's sort of mm -hmm. like makes sense yeah i mean it's a, it's a strange dichotomy and uh Banditus is kind of pointing it out, and it's just like there's got to be a reason. I'm. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, I'm distracted by uh, some memes happening in another channel. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Our apologies. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, uh, I think that that is sort of, I think for you, that is sort of an unanswered question, right? Like that is something I think, I think you are picking up on what I have tried to uh, uh, story tell as far as like, that is a strange dichotomy, um, but there's not really an answer necessarily to it, right? Like the answer is for you to discover, to reconcile that uh, in yourselves. And that's actually the, the last scene that I want to kind of end on is actually that scene. You're kind of anticipating where I was going with that. So uh, before we move there, I want to ask anyone else, is there any, the other, you know, the three doggos, are there anything else that you want to try and get out of, see or experience out of the, the this attending the festival of the dogs in the, in the moonlight? You know? I think in general, or, London, London is trying to make sure that both Daly and Artemis like get mm -hmm. as much out of this as they can since it's their first time. Mm -hmm. Like, so I imagine that like he's like London's often like kind of like pointing them to, Hey, you should try this or, Oh, Oh mm -hmm. yeah, this one's great. This is a lot of fun. You should do this. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Excellent. Wonderful. I know daily follows along except during story time. When story time happens, she just, lays down and if any dog needs extra warmth she's got plenty to offer <laughs> sure you're outside at night it's not as warm as it could be yeah i definitely i think that artemis also falls along um and she has heard so much of like about the mysterious griff and all this stuff that as soon as he starts talking she's just like <laughs> daily's definitely contemplative though she's just like hmm <laughs> all right <laughs> perfect uh wonderful uh and so i think the the scene that i want to end on then hey uh, john you've already anticipated it um but having this sort of like two days in a row right you have this like dog park puppuccino instagram party and then like the next day you go out into the woods and there's like deer bones and stick chasing and a story of like uh, defending the sun from a wildcat in the ancient times. And then the day after that, you're like, it's just a normal day. Like nothing exceptional happens the next day. And so there's the question to end on to think about is sort of like this experience of like this contrast between like the story of the old times and how things used to be the when the when the first friendships between dog and humans were formed and the sort of like where you are now and what kind of what kind of sense do you think what these two the especially to experience the second night the the when the griff comes to town and tells the story and dogs act like they you did before they were friends before they were friends with humans and now you're back sitting in your dog bed on your porch like what have you taken what do you think each of your characters has taken from this sort of window into the into a past time um and and maybe is maybe what did you think about it maybe you don't have an answer to that con that that conflict but you've been given this vision of like a time before you were friends with humans but then part of that was affirming the 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 relationship that you have with the human because now you're back at your day and you're there uh, in, in your familiar surroundings. But do they feel, but how do they feel different now that you've very clear vision of what things were like, might have been like uh, before there were, before you were friends with humans, before dogs were friends with humans. So if that makes, if I've made clear what I'm asking, I'd, I'd love for each of you to give us a little scene about what your dog is thinking about the next day, or, or maybe has learned about themselves, whatever. You know, I think Bandit is, like, uh, questioning a little bit about himself. Like, uh, I'm so small. I'm so, you know, I'm not exactly, like, one of those wild dogs. But 
what if I am at the same time? And so I think mm-hmm. he's, there's that question of what, you know, what roots him in his behavior and uh, maybe at the same time, uh, is does he need to change or is he perfect the way he is at the same time? So I think there's a lot of like questioning and doubt going in his mind as well. Yeah. Perfect. I love it. Daly would be a little bit more attentive to Becca for at least those first couple of days after that experience. Like, just following her around a little bit more closely. I mean, Daly was a rescue. And part of her was being trained to be a service dog. She never made it through the full program, but... She still has those kind of like, oh, hey, my friend needs this. Or, hey, my friend dropped this rag. Let me pick it up for her kind of thing. She's a little bit more clingy than usual after that. Just kind of affirming that friendship. Very affectionate after that. Nice. I I think Artemis, after seeing, um, because I don't think before this she really had a real concept of like wild dogs the coyotes and and dogs that didn't have best friends or parents um and so i think she's a bit more grateful i think she recognizes that she has like maybe she's a little wistful because the idea of being out and doing what she wants is exciting but you know having her mom and knowing you know now a little bit about how the dogs might live I think she's a little bit more like grateful she might even calm down just a smidge not a lot (laughs) just just a little bit um as she learns and and grows in her dogginess (laughs) wonderful wonderful London's best friend is a very much an outdoors person So for London, this experience just kind of reinforces the fact that he's lucky that his owner lets him get back to that primal dog nature so often. Yet uh, at the same time, it's nice to sleep inside. It's nice to have, it's nice to not have to compete or fight for food and shelter. And I think those are all things that as you know the modern dog part of london takes for granted Um, so this little outing every year just reminds him how lucky he really is yeah well great i think uh i think we've done it i think we've come to uh through a little experience together a little bit different uh than what we did last time for sure uh and i think you've all done great with your doggos and uh I think that's the end of this this little stream tonight so uh you get another you can mark another point and uh Woo-hoo. we'll uh do it again next week awesome i think pips, uh, pips, pips. yeah pips. mark them pips uh yeah thanks and i think we do our little uh i think i'd like to do what we did before like there weren't as much i don't know i uh maybe everybody can spot like kind of take a breather and kind of end the stream here uh spotlight uh, of the night um for your either your character or someone else th- something someone else did like just a little uh quick uh in our last few minutes together uh <laughs> highlight something from the night that w- like we did last week i like oh, i have a favorite moment yeah bandit being a little bandit at the dog park <laughs> <laughs> it definitely was surprising uh and and wonderful i love it and I, I especially loved um, London hopping up on the table to be like, I yeah. gotta protect the snacks. Yeah, I think that's. <laughs> I also really like that. Yeah, that was cute. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, to be honest, for me, it's just that all, all, the way everything is just coming together, like all the different pieces, the way that we can uh, contribute to the scene and uh, describing the locations. Uh, and you know, and the opportunity to use the and also kind of mechanic, I love. Mm-hmm. Great. Similarly, I think I liked everybody's scenes at the the hunt 
I liked everybody's little personal touches to the hunt, the things that their dog wanted to do or liked to do. Um, I liked that, again, that kind of just gives you a bit of a, an insight into each of our dogs, right? Yeah. The things that they yeah. enjoy or the things that they are drawn to in a situation like that. Nice. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's hard to pick. I think I just appreciate you all kind of playing along. Tonight was a little bit uh, <laughs> unusual, I think, of nah. play session. So I think the Ooh, adventure, adventure that I had... Uh, it was a little bit different, and uh, so I appreciate just all you play it being game for doing something slightly weird. Uh, so I appreciate it. Who doesn't all love a great a game of yes and? and no, oh exactly, yeah, right? it's great. Yeah. Uh, so I think do we do our like socials again? Yeah, uh, we can go ahead. And... Out or? Yeah, absolutely. If y'all want to go ahead and uh, list where people can. Uh find you and uh things you are working on so i think that'd be a great way to finish out the show all right yeah i mean matt i i kind of uh, stole it from you last time if you want to start off uh no it's fine uh, yeah um uh, i'm matt or i uh, matthew or we one half of wet ink games that is a uh, this game that we've been playing here is forthcoming from us i it's hard to give a street date with uh the way production goes right now but uh it's uh it is forthcoming and you can pre-order it now uh on the kickstarter page for it and uh it's written by uh, uh john kennedy mostly uh, with some help from other uh so that's it and you can find us uh wedding games on the facebook or we have a youtube or we have an instagram find us all those places all right and con season is starting up uh, in a month or so. It's true. Uh, so, true. Where, where will y'all be at any of the cons coming up? Uh, Wet Ink Games will be at Origins and at Gen Con. And uh, I don't know as far ahead as PAX Unplugged, but we'll probably be there, PAX Unplugged, um, nice. as well. Nice. So, yes. Origins is very close. Yep, I will be Feels there, very actually. close. So, nice. Yeah, I'll, I'll be at Origins uh, repping for Epic Can Candle Company. So, awesome! That sounds like fun. All uh, right. uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, you can find me just kind of scattered all over the place, but the best place to find me is at the Midnight Alley Podcast on Instagram, and I think we have our YouTube link there because right now we're still getting that custom URL set up. <laughs> Subscribe, please. I love you. <laughs> uh you can find me uh on the internet anywhere pretty much at c silencio um and then you can also find me on the drunken geek podcast uh we play pathfinder 2e uh you can find us on all the podcatchers the website the drunken geek.com instagram twitter drunken geek pod all that fun stuff <sighs> Oh, and you can find me on the socials at loser mlw uh, you can listen to our my podcast or the podcast i'm a part of redemption podcast it is a star wars actual play we use the ffg system uh, we have a large backlog of seasons so feel free to dive in wherever and uh, and just go with it lots of drama lots of comedy uh, lots of tears <laughs> it's a good time i think and uh, you can also find me on chaos inc on identico uh, you can see those at the Identico YouTube or on the Identico Twitch channel. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Well, everyone, we will see you back here then on next Tuesday for another episode. Y'all take care and stay safe this week. Bye. 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 Oh. Bye.